Mayor, I think uh, we probably can announce that the executive session is closed. Copy move the second in discussion. All those in favor? That passes. Go ahead, Okay. Uh, that adjourns your work session. Mayor William Bill Edwards here. Mayor Pro Tem Mark Baker. Present. Council Member Catherine Brown. Present. Council Member Carmelita Dunn. Present. Council Member Ellie Willis. Present. Council Member Naima Gilliard. In the back. Council Member Rosie Jackson. Here. And Council Member Lee. Present. Mayor Yarbrough. We will now have invocation by Catherine Brown by the Treasurer. Yes. Yes. Hey, gracious God, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. The wonderful Thanksgiving, the sharing of our families, but most of all, the share from city members to city members, the residents, mayor, city council. We just ask your blessings to continue to fall fresh upon us, O God, so that after all the business done, from the least to the greatest, we'll be served in this great city. This we pray, let us all say, Amen. 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 Let allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs>
or you can say I'm going to leave it up to the police chief because the, co the police code that you adopted gives the police chief the ability to unilaterally put the SOPs in place. So he, he has that discretion to do that. The only reason he cannot do it right now is because your prior resolution instructed him to bring it back to you and it said until you bring it back to us this is the policy that we're going to follow. So if you guys are not going to use Fulton County's policy then you need to make a motion tonight and instruct and allow the police chief to designate whatever policy he wants. And if you want to continue to use Fulton County's policy then you need to make that motion as well but I would just suggest clarifying that the references to Fulton County and the respective departments will be interpreted as to be towards South Fulton and not Fulton County. And so, and so can I get a recommendation from the city manager on how, how, because I, I think we should follow, I thank you for a thorough explanation, but we need um, our city manager to weigh in on this as well. So I, I am familiar with your previous resolution I would think that if you have authorized him to develop SOPs, that is right and appropriate because, as you know, your standard operating procedures are a little different. They may change. Um, we have the lock moment that we're bringing on. You could imagine that's going to change our standard operating procedures. I wouldn't expect that he would bring the standard operating procedures back every time they change because they're going to change based on facilities the changing of the beats, all of those things that your police expert is going to do. If you want to review and make public those standard operating procedures, I mean, we would adhere to it, but it would, usually standard operating procedures are something that are internal that change based on circumstances regularly. I haven't seen those brought back to council often. And, and so it's my understanding as policy makers, we stick to policy and then it is up to the city manager to work with the vision heads and they're responsible for establishing SOPs. And so I typically don't want to get into the administrative day-to-day -day activities by approving SOPs because that's not my subject matter expertise. So I think we need to leave, I mean not think, I know we need to leave SOPs under the division commander. Yeah, I think what the city attorney is saying is that that resolution has just been in place and so since March. So since it's been in place in March, they were put on there because that's what that resolution required. But now that it has been brought back, basically, you don't have to approve it or anything. You can defer and let him coordinate his SOPs as appropriate. Okay. She said we want to spend the rules given the opportunity to do right. Uh, well, yes, because yeah. if, you, if, if you don't okay. live the, because right now you have Fulton County in place, so even if you defer it, Fulton County is still going to stay in place. So you will need to move to live Fulton County's policies and procedures. And then that would give the police chief the authority, because right now if you have a policy in place, he is bound by your ordinance and charter to follow it. If you don't have a policy in place, then he can put a policy in place pursuant to your code. Mr. Manager, you want to say something? Yeah, so if, with that being the case, the recommendation would be don't pull it, leave it on the agenda, and when you come to it, you authorize him at that time. Uh, I'd like to do one thing if I can. Uh, can you come up and fight and wait on you know, the Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I completely agree with the assessment of the city attorney and, and the city manager. As you know, it's uh, not usual for uh, department heads to bring the standard operating procedures to the floor of the body, but it's my understanding the way things happened initially uh, that required us to bring them back. And so we've rewritten uh, a lot of those operating procedures, and we've certainly taken a strong look at them. And the, uh, the, uh, the city attorney has been them as well. <coughs> Absolutely, because as the city manager stated, they're going to change. It's a fluid, it's a fluid document, and they'll be changing consistently. Um, we have things such as our handcuffing procedures and things of that nature. And as you can imagine, 
as, as uh, case law and things of that nature develop, our SOPs are evolving as well. So we want to make sure that we're having the most current and up-to-date uh, standard operating procedures because we review them constantly for compliance. And that also has a lot to do with our national and, and state certification as well to make sure that they're constantly updated. Mr. Kareem? Um, <clears throat> If, if, if the if you're proposing an SOP that is substantially different from Fulton County, mm -hmm. I would like to be briefed about it. Okay. Um, I don't know how that if that needs to happen privately or publicly, but I just I, I would just like to know what is being changed. I did not have a chance to read all 1,000 pages. Um, and then secondly, you do have a motion on the floor. So I requested, Mr. Mayor, for us to remove these. Can I give you a recommendation on two motions that are made, that are your options? First of all, what motion? Yes, no. The motion is to remove well, the motion. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. This, so this, is it this second? No, it hasn't. We've been in discussion all this time. I second. No, I do not. I second. I second. I tried to move the second. No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So can I make that? Is this what you were saying? Yeah, I would just like to know how could we go about getting that because I wasn't aware that any of this was happening. And I would just like to be. Clear. Well, some of the policies are radically different than, than what Fulton County had in place, and I have to tell you that because in looking at it, some of them haven't been changed quite a while. Right. And so what we want to make sure we're doing is make sure we put an accreditation person in place to make sure that we're reviewing what the federal government and what the state government is doing as well. And so uh, if, if you can imagine that those policies haven't been changed in a while, I can tell you there's a huge departure in some of them. Uh, and so because there's so many, um, I would look at the uh, most high liability ones with respect to the use of force and um, uh, the uh, car chase policy and things of that nature. Certainly we're constantly looking at ways to evolve those, those uh, different policies. So, uh, Madam City Attorney and Mr. City Manager, do you have a recommendation for how council might be briefed on these different policies? Yeah, I think we could very simply just put together an informational memo that highlights all of the changes or any pertinent changes that are necessary, as well as the process that the chief will use moving forward to adjust his policy and procedures if he sees appropriate. Is there any portion of that that could be public or in a work session for people to know what is I would tell you, when it comes to standard operating procedures, and this is just me, you do not make standard operating procedures uh, public. That has been my practice. I, didn't, I am not familiar with a lot of those activities happening. When it comes to police, I will, of course, defer to the subject matter expert, but that's even a heightened sense because, as you can imagine, when it comes to how you patrol a beat or how you open and close facilities or how you <coughs> arm people and who you arm and things of that nature, you get into their safety. And so I would probably be extra cautious on that. But again, I'm always going to defer to the subject matter expert around uh, police related public safety as I defer to the chief on that. Okay, so I'll, I'll just look for that memo and I hope that we can fix what we've done. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a motion for probably second. All those in favor? Okay, that passes. See, let me make it clear. Now we understand that we're not using this, right? So we're using the voting. Well, we're using the speakers too. That's what I asked. Okay. I said we're not using the. We are using the speakers. They have the difference. We're losing the youth, we're using the speakers too, but we're not using the voting company. So, and, 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 so I think what the recommendation would now be, and I'll, let me defer to the city attorney, but what you would be doing is allowing him to now move forward right. with his standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you remove this, then you still have your prior resolution that says that you're going to abide by Fulton County. So my recommendation would be for you to remove it from the consent agenda, place it on the regular agenda, and 
we were not on the regular agenda. No, we were. Excuse me. Okay, with it being on the regular agenda, then the recommendation would be to either move on the regular agenda. Then the recommendation would be to either say Fulton County is in place until the council reviews policies and adopts, or say Fulton County is in, in place until the police chief unilaterally reviews and adopts. Because, so uh, that's the reason that I asked, because at this point we have just removed it from the agenda. So at this point, Fulton County policies are in place. So what do we need to do now? So now, <coughs> I would do a motion to reconsider to put it back on the agenda because you need to establish tonight whether you're going to let the police chief unilaterally adopt policies or whether you're going to keep Fulton County and have him bring it back to you. Can we can we make a can we make a motion? Can we um, why do we have to rescind to put these back on the agenda? Our motion to take them off, we vote to take them off. Why can't we just ask to make put that what you're suggesting at the end of the agenda? Well, you we can just make a motion for the floor to do what you're asking. Yeah, that's an alternative motion. Both both will accomplish the same result. You can move to amend the agenda to add this item. Okay, our motion to amend the agenda to add to add discussion of the police as orders. Yeah, to, to amend the agenda to add discussion of the police orders and procedures. Okay, um, and the, so why are we discussing to, because we decided we want to give him discretion, so we just need to... Well, you actually didn't decide that. Yeah, you have to put it on the agenda on that so you can decide. So that's okay, we saying. want to add to the agenda, we want to amend the agenda to add a discussion to give our police chief discretion to update SOP. Correct. And then when you get to it on the agenda, then you would make that motion of course. Second. Second. Probably move the second any further discussion. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get down the way. I'm asking you to choose. Is it on the no, it's not, it's not on this other one. We're, we're currently on the item of. No, no, no. We're, 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 we're on the right. item of approving the regular agenda. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Khalid, is your issue have to do with amending the, 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 the regular, regular agenda? agenda? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I would like to make a motion to move the ethics ordinance to the top of the regular agenda. Second. Probably move the second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That passes. Mm -hmm. I'll here. Go. Um, I would like to pull ordinance 2018-04 for further review. Which one is that? Okay. Okay. That's the short term one there. And we can bring it back on December the 11th. Okay. That's Mark, you move the second in discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes. Mm -hmm. Never. So now you do the motion to yeah. uh, I make a motion to adopt the regular meeting agenda as a meeting. So I have one additional um, request to make sure that uh, ordinance 2018-05 for the tree ordinance is noted for Gilliard and Donald as possible. Is just the number you know, the name on uh, it? It's the tree, uh, it's the appendix in the tree on this for the code, the city code. All right. Uh, uh, I wanted to also clarify that the subdivision regulations for appendix actually are the sole sponsor of the building. You want to repeat that again? Yeah, so division, so division regulations of the appendix is um, here. Your just to sell something. Yeah. This appendix B. 
right? Any other team? Yeah, I meant to go I guess we can make a motion there. Someone will make a motion. Make a motion to amend the regular agenda. Oh, to accept the regular agenda as amended. Second. Second. Proper move to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes. Okay, Mr. Kirk. Okay, so that takes you to the first business item, and this is rezoning modifications and variances to public hearings. They're all at the top of page two. What about public comment? I'm rushing you. <laughs> okay, we have eight speakers. The first four speakers, if you would please approach the center aisle and the podium at this time, Mr. Renu, Ms. Joy Holly, Ms. Brenda H. Jenkins, and Ms. Helen Vance. about <clears throat> some issues I'm having with the authorities on Bucket Road. Uh, constantly being accused, being accused of horses that I do not own. And this phone right here, I got videos in 2016 that I've been giving to Animal Control, Paul Howard, Rob Pitt, Auburn Ellington, of how the horses from next door keep coming onto the property. I recently was given a ticket, and on the ticket, the officer said, uh, Reynolds, she said, I didn't even see the horse. It was over here, said. This road continued. Since 2016, I've been being accused of things, and I've been found not guilty of everything. I'm out of over $100,000 in these fees. So I'm not trying to make Button Road look bad, but I've been falsely accused. My neighbors uh, put a lawsuit on me. The ranch next door, the county supports them. And these are the things that's going on on in the government that I don't like. Uh, I don't know how the government supported them when the deed was recorded with my name on it. But they still took in court and held it pending for a year. I'm asking somebody in here who has power to not just hear me, but do something. I'm doing everything the right way. I'm not being aggressive, I'm not yanking nobody up off the street. Meadows is also there, Chief Meadows. He seen the horse, told him, told animal control to impound it. They didn't impound it. They waited for them to come home and put the horse behind the fence. When it's me, they put me on channel two, impound it, and they give me animal cruelty charges. I used to live next door at that ranch. And uh, I know next door they have a friend, her name is LaDawn Jones. I'm just putting all the facts out there. I don't know who, buddy, buddy, who's friends, but I don't want y'all just to hear me do something. I'm not crazy, I'm dedicated. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. I want to speak to the uh, waste vendors issue um, that was at the uh, work session earlier. Uh, number one, uh, let me just say that I don't know who decided to mail out what mail at the time that they did. Most of the individuals in my subdivision did not get it until the day before Thanksgiving. And then we were told that November 30th was the expiration date. So we're quite concerned. Secondly, uh, we called every single vendor that was listed on the list. And hear me, council members, not one, not one stated that they would be able to pick up the trash, okay, in my area. So I don't know what else is going on, but not what. The deadline of January that I heard, January 1st, which is New Year's Day, given hearing what was going on today, it seems as though you're kind of putting the cart before the horse, you don't have all the procedures out there, but you have a <coughs> deadline that you're setting for us. It would seem that you would get the deadlines first, that you would ask for residents to come in and talk about what in the world was going on. It would seem that my council member and other council members would get all documents that are being sent out to residents first <coughs> because who we call is that, and that's not, and that's basically not, not happening. And to hear someone say, since I worked in government too up north, 
that they're going to try to do their best to get the council members the documents that are being sent out to residents. I think they ought to do more than try. Up north is considered, that's what you do. It's not considered maybe an I'll try. The other thing I want to say is, is that you might want to think about having one provider rather than 50 million providers. That means my trash, my trash is picked up on Tuesday, <coughs> Wednesday, 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 Thursday, 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 Friday, and I get garbage trucks every day. You might think about one provider. If nothing else, it makes it easier to monitor for you guys, and it certainly makes it easier in our community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brenda Jenkins from District 7. Um, Mayor, City Council. Um, mostly my comments are to you, Mr. To Mr. Uh, oh, Mr. Donald. Okay, last month you attended the HLA meeting for Oakley Township. When we expressed our concerns to you, you about sanitation, you indicated that as an HOA, we could decide which area comes in our community. According to our HOA attorney, we would be setting ourselves up for a lawsuit, and we could not. So I have the same sentiments as the lady before me. The cards that went out, I got mine maybe a week before Thanksgiving, but to send those cards out with multiple haulers who were not available to everyone that they went out to, to me was a little bit irresponsible. And it was a little backwards. In calling the haulers, some of them said, well, we only do commercial, we don't do your neighborhood. We, you know, that, that was just confusing and um, unacceptable to me. Now, like the lady before me, I don't want a trash hauler in my community five days a week and trash cans sitting on the curb five days a week. In making these decisions, I feel like not only should, I know you had a deadline, but not only should the city be concerned about the financial and legal impact of the city, you should be concerned about the everyday impact of the residents of the city. In addition, you said that you can't control the market. If you enter into contract with a hauler to service your citizens, you should be controlling the market. And to me, that's just unacceptable. Waste Industries has almost doubled their price. Yes. They're taking advantage of this situation, and you need to fix it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. uh, Ms. Helen Vance, Ms. Eliza Collins, Ms. Demita Chapman, and Mr. Richard B. Allen. Good evening. Again, I'm Helen Vance, District 6, Old National East. And I do want to express the same sentiments as my two predecessors regarding the sanitation service. So my question to the council is, how can I help you? So I did receive a nice glossy postcard in enough time. I called every vendor. No one is servicing my area, Old National East, except for the vendor that I have, the vendor who I always will have, because no one is going to infringe on the other company's revenue base. So if I wanted to switch, no options. The second thing is, when it comes to policing the issue for people that don't have the trash service, that's going to be very easy because only certain haulers are going to continue to work certain areas and you know who they are. They're very quick to tell you. So I want to know what I can do to help the council if it's an analysis, if it's some type of study, because who we currently have now is who we're going to have. We're not going to get recycling service. We're not going to get yard clipping pickup. We're not going to get heavy trash. There, we are at a zero sum game with the trash haulers. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, the other speakers, again, your names are Ms. Glenda Collins, Ms. Demita Chapman, and Mr. Richard B. Allen. 
If none of those speakers are here, the last speaker is Mr. Alfred Jones. If you all would please come approach the center aisle. Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm here to talk about the trash. I got two things I want to talk about, the trash and the HOA. First, I'm saying this as an HOA president. When we, bought, when we bought into the subdivision, we have bylaws and covenants that we follow. The city council don't need to get in that business. The state of Georgia already got covenants and bylaws for that. I'm going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to go to trash. I have waste industry. I call waste industry because I received a postcard. I'm not going to change. I'm all right. But when we did the city, and yes, I fought for the city, that was one of the stipulations that trash come over. The council tabled it, argued it, back and forth. Then you want to throw it in the lap of homeowners in the fifth hour is unacceptable. You guys should pick one trash company. I don't care if they're black, blue, or orange. Pick it, serve it, and move on. Now, where I pay my other taxes at, I have a trash company. That trash company, that trash bill is in my water bill. That's how they do it in Ohio. No problem. Here, you got, I'm just saying, 20 trash companies. Every day it's a trash. When I first built my house in South Fulton, we had dream sanitation. Dream sanitation was bought out by waste. Then the next one was bought out. Okay? Now you got trash cans on the corners everywhere. Pick one trash can. That's what you guys are up there for. Not to throw it on residents and say you need to do this. That's what you were elected for. Follow that charter. I believe all of you guys can make the right decision. You might, your decisions might hurt somebody, but make the right decision. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Richard Allen, and I'm here on behalf of the same issue. And uh, my issue concerns a lot of the seniors. I live in the old family area. And a lot of my neighbors are seniors, including myself. And uh, we, we have concerns related to uh, the vendors and what are they actually going to provide. As the speakers earlier before me have stated, when they contacted the companies, they're saying that they were out of the reach of that area or out of that zone, whatever you want to term it. But anyway, we feel that it's okay to have vendors, but have credible vendors who's going to do the job correctly and in the right manner if they're going to provide professional services. Also, we have existing the uh, Merck Road Transfer Station. That station has been operational for some 20 plus years. A lot of people have privately taken their trash and garbage there, pay a fee each time they come and go, and other fees depending on what type of materials they take over there. So we would like to know, since vendors have been authorized, some eight or ten of them, okay, if a person uh, decides that they do not want to call one of them and sign up, but up one of those programs, and if they were already taking their garbage over to Merck Road, okay, why not continue to take it over to Merck Road? You know, if, if you feel that you were getting good service from that outlet or that option, why can't they continue? Uh, it's our understanding that they are not being closed, so that's an option for the people who desire to take it. Thank you, sir. So we ask that you consider that as well. And in your... Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council, for the Collins District 5. Our residents that have trash pickup, 
This does not mean that that, that will eliminate the dumping of household goods and other items. That should be a waiver for residents who use other means of disposing of their household trash. The trash vendors are charging a franchise fee. They're putting that on the bill. A law that was implemented for the, uh, only for the citizens and they were only given 10 days to comply. Waste management is not in compliance. The ordinance that the provider is supposed to follow does not include recyclables, household goods, and other means. So if they are not in compliance, how can you hold the residents in compliance of a law that you have implemented? And besides, the dumping property will live, will continue in the city. And the people that's doing this dumping and throwing trash are probably the people that do not live in the city or maintain households. And all the people that live in the city understand that a clean environment will produce economical growth and keep the property value up. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Alfred Jones. I'm from District 3. I have four points regarding public safety. Number one, tractor trailers are continuously using Scarborough Road as a cut through from South Fulton Parkway and the warehouses. I, I've lived there over 36 years and never before have we had that. It's a little two lane road we fought Moder wanted to put the buses there. We were successful in getting that stopped. The second point, CSX trains, they're blocking Mallory and Fairwood crossings for over 30 minutes at a time. That could be a tragic mistake. Point three, with that being said, fire station number one, on Wackmall Road. It has been shut down, closed temporarily. My question to you is how long is that going to occur? Because the bottom line, that's going to affect response time for fire and paramedics. The fourth point, Seaborn Lee Elementary School. People are speeding on Scarborough Road. The posted speed limit is 45, but we have a school zone. We have the flashing lights. I observe people every morning, every afternoon, they are running through there like there is no school zone. And it's just going to take one tragedy to occur where a kid going to step out or somebody can get killed or seriously hurt. I want you to do something about that because there is no sidewalks. You have kids that are walking, trying to get to school. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I would just like to make a motion to allow the public comment to be extended for approximately another 10 minutes to allow our uh, city manager to respond to some of the uh, comments made in regards to sanitation. excited to have as many people come out today and kind of voice their opinions. So I think there are a few things to kind of highlight. I appreciate the comments from the young lady from, I believe, District 7, but I'd like to give her a little bit of clarity, not to say she was completely wrong, but I think there are some additional activities related to that. At the time, 
that we met, we had not passed the ordinance. And so it was our intention to allow for certain uh, items, but after doing some research, the best model is the one uh, that council provided. And while the second young lady has a great point that those uh, mailers did not come in the timely manner that we would like, we passed the ordinance in, uh, on the 23rd, and then we provided our first batch of information. Uh, I think the not having enough time is 100% correct, and that's why we're calling it an extension on enforcement, but it's really a grace period. And I know that everyone did not get to attend the work session, but the council uh, asked that not only do we extend it to January 1st, but we have a public time frame for which we will extend uh, the grace period so that everyone not only gets the information that they need, but they're able to provide some insight. And so that grace period uh, will be made public and that date will be made public as well. Uh, I think the other uh, piece that I think that we wanna make sure that people understand is, is that what the council is doing is actually regulating the services and activities and putting things in place to make sure that not only everyone has service, but that people get quality service. But if you had service before, you are not required to change vendors, et cetera, et cetera. The same vendors that were in place are in place and should be providing services. We've received quite a few different calls that that may not be the case. And so what we're doing is bringing vendors into uh, City Hall to make sure that they're holding up their end of the bargain. And so that's the reason why we've also provided this grace period. So all of those concerns uh, are not falling on deaf ears. They're actually very valid and we're taking those things not only into account, but making sure that we provide action against those. Uh, the Merck Road piece, I think is one that we are very much looking at very closely because the city does not currently operate Merck Miles. And what I think uh, Council Member Willis during the work session mentioned is that we don't want to put all of our eggs into Merck Miles as a concessionary point and then end up not being able to operate it and cause our residents more problems. But we are very much taking that into consideration. I think one oversight that we've all seen is that while our vendors provide uh, concessions to special populations, including vendors, our uh, ordinance does not specifically call it out. And so that's one area that we've committed to make a recommendation and bring back to the council so that they can make an amendment to the ordinance and ensure that those special populations are also taken into consideration. So that's something that our residents have expressed not only tonight, but even prior to, and we're making sure to incorporate that. Uh, and while this change does not and will not eliminate illegal dumping, it will help and assist with. And I think we all want a clean city and we want to make sure that we put things in place that help us move that forward. The having the different trucks uh, on the streets at all times, I think that is a challenge that not only our residents have brought forward, but our uh, council has as well. I think just as it is many times, the residents and our council are lockstep in the things that they're concerned about and want for the city. And so there should be no additional trucks on the road based on this ordinance, because remember, the same people that are in place should not, it should not change. And so it shouldn't be more trucks, although it may not meet our goal of having less trucks. And so these changes to the ordinances, the ordinance, as well as how we evaluate this service model over the next year will help us come to the point of how do we lower trucks, ensure correct services, and get the best model. I think very clearly uh, our residents, some want one, uh, one service provider, others want to have the option to choose. This model currently gives us as much of an opportunity for that as possible and we have to keep refining it, but I can assure you that if this model does not necessarily fit the needs of the residents, our council is already reviewing what the impact is and how at the end of our term 
we can go to a one system model. And so I think, uh, the again, the concerns that were brought forth tonight, while they're not all of the concerns, people have brought ideas. I think it was a, a great gesture by the young lady who has a specialty to bring her uh, skill set to be able to help the city, you know, identify and do some additional research. I think there are other people who have brought that forward as well. And our partners at uh, Waste Industries and the other uh, contracted vendors, as well as Jacobs, our new service provider, have also looked at that as well. So I'm confident that we will get this right and make sure that we deliver it. But the key part, and I think our mayor mentioned this during the work session, is that we've got to make sure to hear from our residents, take you guys' input, and be able to continue to refine the model to get you the best service delivery possible. And so I'm confident that we'll do that, have no qualms about people uh, bringing their concerns forward. And I think the first step that we've made in providing this uh, grace period is also going to help us hear from you through these uh, public activities. If you were not here for the work session, just very briefly, we will have at least two open sessions for you to be able to participate. One uh, will definitely be a webinar and one that's in person, although we'll probably have uh, more activities than that. And so uh, the model is not complete, but we do have a quality ordinance in place. All of the vendors that you had before remain intact. And so we are also working with them to expand their service area. And finally, when it comes to the market, uh, when we refer to the market, you already had a market of apparently eight to 10 vendors. That does not change. We have eight vendors and they have a market. I would argue that they probably were not as competitive as they could have been and should have been. And now that everyone has an opportunity to provide service, it is our expectation and our hope that the competition will also assist us in bringing the prices down. And so with that, I don't, I don't know how you'd like to proceed, Mayor, but I wanted to make sure, and I appreciate Mayor Pro Tem uh, Baker and the council allowing us to respond today, although our responses, of course, would not end today. We need to make sure that we're keeping the public in the loop of these decisions and what their opportunities are. Uh, Mr. Lee, you and Hugh, uh, however, we have uh, allowed you have a couple of minutes. Uh, 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 Ten minutes. Uh, 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 I don't know if the city manager actually said this, but I would like for everybody to take this number down. It's 470-552-4311. That is a 24-7 uh, customer service number for our new public works slash sanitation department. So if you have questions about or concerns about public works or sanitation, you can call that number. Again, it's 470-552-4311. And it's on the website. And it is on our website, city of South For my residents of District 6, thank you so much, Ms. Vance. We do only currently have one provider, which is Waste Industries. They will be providing recycling that starts December 1st. It's going to be an extra $12 a month. I will have more details about the services that are available on Home National. If you are not signed up to the newsletter, you can text the word Fulton to 444-999. Again, you can text the word Fulton to 444 999 for see my assistant Mr. Mitzi Allen has his hand raised in the back right there. He'll get you signed up and you'll get information about our services in South and uh, the whole national area this week. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to uh, the big you and Q, I'm going to allow and Mr. and Mr. Boyd, at least two minutes each. How long that long? I just wanted uh, to actually defer my time to our city manager, but I have three points that I did want him to touch that I believe a lot of people came here and wanted clarity on. The first one is I wanted to have a specificity regarding the time frame or the term uh, that we have to operate under this uh, under this model. And I also would like you to provide a little bit more clarity on the 5% okay. of the regulation. And lastly, the upfront costs from waste industry that a lot of uh, residents are concerned about. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a, the only problem with that is 10 minutes is up. Well, I mean, got your minute and a half, man. I'm going to give you that, too, and I got to get for that, too. You asked for 10 minutes, you need 10 minutes. So the time frame of the term, uh, council has decided that we would look at this for one year, and so this year um, will allow us to uh, be in compliance for our loss funding as well as uh, put this model in place and evaluate it. Uh, during the same time, of course, we will be receiving feedback from council and the residents uh, on a procurement model similar to the one we proposed earlier, but that is refined that will take us back to one uh, vendor if necessary. The 5%, again, I think that's something that uh, we, have, we discussed briefly in the work session and we'll highlight now is that the 5% is based on gross receipts. And so, you said what now? No, but it's based on gross receipts. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. It is, it is based on, it is 5% of the gross receipts of the funds received. What we would use it for is for road improvements and, and maintenance and things of that nature. But uh, what we have been notified by our uh, residents and constituents is that this 5% has been added to each bill. And so what we're looking at is how that, it, how that occurs because the vendor may be causing themselves a hardship because of this 5% of gross receipts. I used the example earlier is that if they collected $1,000, then the 5% would be of that $1,000. But if they add 5% on top of it, then we will be getting 5% of that 5% and the $1,000. So we want to make sure we get with them this week, clarify what the ordinance says, and ensure that they are coordinating appropriately with our residents and not passing on additional costs. Uh, the final piece is we heard that one of the vendors, which I won't name because there may be more that are doing it, have requested upfront cost. And so that is not something that we want to occur within this market based on the ordinance. And so if that is their normal way of doing business, where they've been doing that for 20 years and they provide the upfront cost and that's just how they operate, then you know that's how they do business and that is normal. But if, they, uh, if that is something that they've done to kind of monopolize the industry and take advantage of residents, then we have a very uh, big problem with that. And so in our meeting this week, we'll be discussing that in depth and bringing it back to the council as well as uh, making sure uh, that that issue has been rectified. So I'd also like to say I know that Waste, Industry, Waste Industries has been a solid partner throughout this process and they do have a representative here tonight. I think her, uh, oh, she's already there. Well, she was here earlier, Ms. Renzo, but she has provided her contact information. We've been in contact with them. And so if people have these type of issues and concerns, we definitely want them to use our 4311 number so that they can let us know and we can work with, uh, with, with our uh, vendors to make sure we rectify all issues. So thank you for that, Mayor. What is the thing you have? I'm going to close this conversation in two minutes. Mr. City Manager, um, I think um, there has been um, a bit of confusion because when the other city manager was here, there were town halls and a presentation on sanitation. And what was communicated to residents is that we were going to have one vendor, maybe two, no more than two, and we were going to negotiate that their sanitation was going to remain comparable to what they're paying now or lower, but because we adopted this model, it does not allow for that. And so um, also that 5% franchise fee, waste industries. No, we don't want to call it franchise Well, on, on the bill that I have, he could, they have it labeled as an infrastructure fee. But waste industry said it was city of South Fulton. It was because of the city, and that was the communication I received. I've been with a waste industry for over 10 years, and I received that communication. I was upset because they miscommunicated to residents that we were the cause of them charging the additional 5%. So that communication needs to be rectified on their behalf. And then, even though people have decided to keep waste industries, if they want recycling, if they want additional services, waste industries 
is charging additional for those fees. So you have some residents who have been paying $35 a quarter for trash, and now they're receiving bills for $58. So that's where, um, and the question to you is, do we have to stay with this model for a year? Are we, I mean, are we bound to that? So I believe the council can make the decision that, that they would like. I think we went through a couple of models to get to this one, and so I think that is a answer that is best served for the council, not for me. I think uh, we have, we will administer whichever model you see fit. I think that you've chosen a quality model that is in place now, but if you evaluate it and you believe that it is not appropriate, we can go back to the procurement model. But I, think I, I, just, I just don't want to try to keep business in business so they can make money off of the backs of our residents, especially our seniors who have who are on six incomes. Again, council member, no, no argument from me there. I think we've looked at both models and we have chosen this one. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say you should abandon it today, uh, but but I would defer to the will of the council in the model that you would want to implement, and we will deliver it accordingly. Okay. Uh, and I just I'm piggybacking off what Councilwoman Lewis said. The five percent, and if you look at the Sandy Springs model, if you look at John Street, that is what they all charge. So it's not anything that we're doing different. The only thing is, is that the vendors are passing it on to the residents. So the problem is actually talking with the vendors. The city is doing everything that they can to possibly make this a you know, meetable for the residents, but this is something that is a common practice. And um, we just really need to try to get this straight. So hopefully the meeting that you have with the vendors that they will be amenable to what the city is going to decide. But that 5% is what most cities are charging to uh, for the vendors to keep our roads straight. It's the infrastructure fee. Thank you, Ms. Governor. I just want to give an update on Fire Station 1. I sent it in my last newsletter, I gave an update. So if you read the last newsletter, it says that the council unanimously approved a $250,000 upgrade uh, to uh, renovate Fire Station 1. So it will be renovated at the top of the year. As a matter of fact, the mayor and I are going to look at some of the Pictures tomorrow. So that was my past, that was my last newsletter. Uh, Mayor, can I just um, answer Councilwoman Willis's question earlier? Um, I wanted to look at the, the sanitation yeah, yeah, ordinance. Was. Okay, it's, her question was how long are we stuck with this? And um, we put a provision in the ordinance that says the city at its discretion may terminate all contracts under this ordinance within 60 days written notice. So we gave the contractors and the vendors notice that upon 60 days the city can rearrange whatever model. All right. Uh, Mr. Burke, Kramer, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, that takes you to the area I was attempting to take us earlier. That's rezoning modification variances. You have four public hearings for a city initiated um, tax changes, I believe, to your zoning code. Ms. Reed, before we get started, I'm going to open up the public hearing. Uh, could we get a brief on all of these, or do you want to take one at a time with the better? We can do them all at Okay, and then we'll, you will be able to get out of the Correct. Okay, go right here. Thank you, Mayor. So there's four items that are all city-initiated text amendments. This is the city's first opportunity of text amendments for zoning. Um, um, the telecommunications um, piece, we'll get more detail on that later in the uh, piece for the ordinance further down. But uh, we have spent a number of opportunities meeting and discussing the telecommunication piece. Uh, the planning and zoning portion, which is usually located in your meeting code, that item as well will be added, as well as the zoning ordinance, which is a separate file. And then last, of course, the subdivision regulation, which is not a part of the zoning resolution, but it is a um, subsection of zoning. So all four of those items require a public hearing that will allow for the public to either speak for or against. So I will now open the public hearing. All those who want to speak on any one of these items, please come for or against. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Honorable Honorable District Six. I'll start with the first term communications ordinance. Um, it, very concerned that we're looking at this before we tackle the master plan of updating the comprehensive plan. The way it's set up now is that it makes sure that these types of devices and towers are only located in certain areas. These are the same thing as doing billboards and warehouses. And the way it's set up and the way the zoning is set up now, all of those things are courted toward the area that we call this class two subdivision area. And it's derogatory especially to the whole national community. We're also looking at these zoning regulations. I get it. You have to get something in place so that we can be compliant, I guess, with that. But if I look down on the, on the agenda, I'm looking at where we're doing moratoriums on certain things. The telecommunications, that needs to have a moratorium on it until we can evaluate certain things going forward with this one. We're also looking at these zoning resolutions. All we're doing is kicking the can down the road instead of dealing with what needs to be dealt with. I looked at these meetings several, a um, um, couple of meetings ago. We talked about concern of, of parks at Old National and the community going in there. Has nothing to do with parks and regulation. It's everything to do with this conference of plan. We looked at when the police pulled out crime stats and those sorts of things. The way you show them all on national, especially in District 6, those were the highest ones. It has nothing to do with police. It has everything to do with this land use plan and this comprehensive plan. Until we deal with this, these subliminal issues that exist in this plan, we will always be terrible. You can look at this. Every new employee at a higher level that comes into this community is always located on the north side of South Fulton <coughs> and never on the south side of South Fulton. It was done purposely because we had all the good areas with all the quality things set up on one side and all the small, cheap rental and clubs and that thing set up on the other. And we're saying that that's supposed to be something that we thought was good for the city and it is not. I urge everybody to deal with this like it needs to be dealt with. Problems that you cut that the community comes up and talks about is nothing to do with these small individual type areas. It's everything to do with how you classify this community and how you treat certain people in this community. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm hearing no other speakers out close Okay, sir. Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of council. As adopted during the adoption of today's regular meeting agenda, the first item for consideration is around ethical standards ordinance. That's on page three of today's printed agenda. And it is for first reading. This is an ordinance to amend Title I administration of the City of South Fulton Code of Ordinances to help ensure high ethical standards within the city and for other lawful purposes. This item is co-sponsored and actually is coming back um, with, I guess, different text changes and it's co-sponsored by Council Members Khalid, Brown, Gums, and Willis under Ordinance 2018-052. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to move I don't have anything. This is, this is just the first one.
and some of us have come first, and we just don't feel like people with convict that have been convicted of a felony place should be on the ethics board. There's just some things convicted felons cannot do, and I do believe in restoration, but you know, convicted felons can't be police officers. They can't be judges. And I just think when you start talking about ethics, I don't think that should be a place for a convicted felon. So I would like for you to consider removing that stipulation of if you haven't been convicted of a felon more than 10 years or your rights have been instituted, you should be allowed to be on the ethics board. Um, one of the things we talked about um, when we had this original uh, ordinance for conversation uh, is we talked about adding nepotism provisions in this ordinance and it's not included in this draft. So if you could bring that back with the second reading, uh, it would be appreciated. And I, I just wanted to clarify, so we do have provisions that deal with nepotism in the sense that you there can't be a conflict if you have an immediate family member. It defines what an immediate family member is. Um, you can't have a substantial interest. A substantial interest constitutes having a relationship with someone who is of a, a familial status. So for clarification, can you can you give me a little more feedback on how you want to expand on the definition? I will work with you directly before we see the second ordinance, so it goes a little deeper. Okay. Is that it? Uh, are you yeah. Okay, uh, Councilman Yes. And so I've, okay, thank you. I've also uh, talked with you about nepotism as well, and I've taken it to a to further with HR. And HR has uh, Aquila, is she here? She also says that in our policy, we address nepotism um, as far as height. You do um, in your HR policy. You do yes, that and she has uh, pointed me to the extensive uh, policy that we have in our city that addresses nepotism. And so I also asked her, was there, is that something that we needed to strengthen? And she assured me, no, we didn't need to strengthen it because it was pretty, it was covered extensively in our HR policy. Thank you. Hey, uh, Mr. Glee. Okay. Um, so this is this is just the first week, but I do want to make note that there are lines uh, for each a portion of the ordinance includes uh, who each council member will be nominated, and I just want to make sure that when we when it comes before us on December 11th, that everyone has their nomination ready so that we can pass the ordinance. That is actually a part of the ordinance that has been passed with the nominees. Place. And we do want to make sure that we have that. Uh, it's our last meeting of the year, and uh, the state legislature will be going into session afterwards. Okay, seeing I'm on the members in the queue, I'm very excited. Okay, that takes you back to your resolution section on page two. The first item is co sponsored by Council Members Willis and Gums, Resolution 2018 075, a resolution adopting the City of South Fulton Police Department. Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. Roman number one and two, we removed. Correct. Okay, so that takes you to Roman number three. Um, that's sponsored by Council Member Gilliard, Resolution 2018 077, a resolution by the City of South Fulton, Georgia, establishing a moratorium on the acceptance of applications for rezoning and variances within city districts two through six and for other lawful purposes. First, I want to uh, uh, thank my um, constituent, Mr. Michael Venable, and I want to get that question addressed. If we enact this moratorium, does it prevent the installing of new telecommunications antennas in districts two through six? Is, is that covered by the moratorium in any way? This moratorium does not cover telecommunications. It covers variances, requests for rezoning, and permitting requests for district four. CUP and agricultural areas. So that would be, I guess I'm asking you, because part of zoning is like a sign, so we can't 
you can't put a new sign up, can you, if there's a moratorium? And so what's the difference between the sign and the antenna, or is it because it's in the right way? Well, the request for the telecommunications process wouldn't be a request for rezoning. So if you asked to put up um, something under the telecommunications ordinance, it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't be a request for variance or a request for, for rezoning. So okay. you would need to do a separate moratorium on telecommunications. All right. My uh, next questions will be for Ms. Reed. Uh, um, I believe that part of the reason for this moratorium is there is a concern. Uh, from several, from a majority of council people about both the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance. But in my conversation, so the, at the moratorium is for four months, but in my conversations with you today, uh, I understand that the timeline for when the zoning ordinance will be completed will probably not be until August. Okay, so we have a, um, I don't know the public probably is not aware of that yet, but we have contracted with a company to draft our zoning ordinance. Um, the proposal or the timeline that was submitted in their proposal does allow for there to be a fall 2019 adoption. So, no, that wouldn't be something that's adopted within the next few months. That would be something that would be adopted almost a year from now. And so, when this, when this, when this, I'm trying to choose my words carefully, when this zoning resolution is adopted, I'm assuming that it will be, and then it expires in four months, it is likely that if we have no zoning ordinance, that it will be readopted. And it will probably continue to be readopted until we have a complete zoning ordinance. So is there any way you think that that date could be moved up that we might be able to go through the zoning ordinance if we fast track it, if we prioritize it, and maybe get it done by the summer or spring, it will really be August? So we, we are basically in a contract with a company that we've agreed with timeline. So at this point, we make, make a change, they were requested to make a change, they could, but they wouldn't be held to do that. So I'm going to be honest, it's only it's something you do want to take the time if you don't want to rush that. You want to allow for the public to come out and have different opportunities and so forth. So I wouldn't want to see that be something that's fast tracked necessarily. Thank you. Um, so my, my final question for this round will be for our city attorney. Um, I'm going to give you a, a fact pattern. I want you to iraq it out for me. Um, the the if I am a if I am a property owner or a developer and I have bought property in 2016, and I do I have a reliance can i can i make an argument i'm sure you can always make an argument in court but how valid is an argument how winnable do you think it is for someone to make an argument that when i bought this property it was zoned this particular way and the zoning has changed is that going to affect our do you see where i'm going with this is that going to are they going to have a valid claim that we have changed the zoning after they bought the property and that they should be entitled to the zoning before the change. So the answer to that question is, is very fact intensive. Um, you've, it's been a, a right area of litigation in Georgia where we have moratoriums that have been established and people have um, sued the cities. So it's going to depend on what steps you've taken in reliance. It's going to depend on what approvals you've seen up until that point. And we did put language in this moratorium that clarifies that if you pass those standards that are set up under Georgia law for reliance, then the city will allow your application to move forward. Great. So this, this is extension of the moratorium. Is this one another 90 days? So this, this extension is for four months. Because when you adopt, and assuming that you re-adopt, that you adopt the zoning code tonight. What will happen is you will your your current moratorium will end because your prior moratoriums, uh, the language says that upon readoption of your zoning code, that 
the moratorium in. So this moratorium is for four months, but technically it's three months almost from the date that your current moratorium was otherwise scheduled to end. So it was, it was scheduled to end December 19th. Mm -hmm. So we, I've tacked on an additional time period to cover the shortened time frame that we're going to have now by readopting your code in November. So if I want to shorten it, uh, what would I need to do? Just come back what, within 30 days? Because my thought is for District 3 is I want to extend the moratorium for an additional 30 days, but um, after that 30 days, I want to be specific about what I'm trying to put a moratorium on after I've had opportunity to work a little with the um, um, vendor, the uh, zoning vendor. When I say be specific, uh, I know there has been some um, undesired development that is forthcoming in District 3, and so before we have an opportunity to work with the residents and find out what they want. I want to make sure that we put a moratorium on that type of development until I have had an opportunity to work with the community. So what I'm saying is I want 30 days for everything as an extension, but I may come back after 30 days and say, okay, I want a moratorium for this specific type of development for another 30 days or 60 days. Until I've had, until I've vetted it with the community, is that legal? Yes, you can you can terminate shortened moratoriums at any point along the way. So if you say a moratorium is going to be 90 days and uh, 60 days from now, the council decides we don't want 90 days. We want you know it to end today, or we want 10 additional days. You can always shorten or or place limits on the scope of what you put in place. Okay, thank you. Since two, three, five, and six, since two, three, five, and six um, are listed uh, in um, in this moratorium, and I've heard from six and three, so I would like to ask uh, two: uh, Are you going to extend, um, or are you going to opt out, or what are you going to do? And then I will finish with what I what I would like. To do. I would like, I believe I have a meeting with the consultants coming up this week, um, so I probably can extend it for an additional 30 days. Um, I do know that there are some things that are coming to the district, but um, I need to really kind of see how we do with anyone. So I don't mind if you want to extend an additional 30 days and then come back. Tonight, when you read about the zoning code. 
So I can't do one piece and, 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 not do, and not do the other? No, your second piece, as far as the CUP and the agricultural, we'll stay. that would stay in place. Right. You would just, as far as the rezoning and the variances, that would end tonight. Yeah, I have to opt out for <clears throat> until the next meeting. But my request is going to be that you guys table this to where you do your motion for how you're going to structure it okay. for at tonight after the adoption of the zoning code because you want that to occur for first before you actually vote on this. For me, is that great clarity on what you just said? Yeah. Can, uh, so, so before you vote, the motion, the first motion would be to table this following vote on the zoning amendments. And then after you vote on the zoning amendments, then you do your motion as to how you will proceed. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I'll entertain uh, Council on Council on Miles and Council of Reed will close the conversation. As it relates to this, are you uh, mayor wanting to say comments relative to the content? There are a couple of things that I think we need some basic cleanup in this ordinance uh, because it will be in place basically for nine months or thereabouts. Um, any to replace prior two dates, any reference to it, I think it should be the city's incorporation date, not any period prior to. Um, replace board zoning appeals with zoning appeals board. Replace Director of Environment and Community Development and replace with Director of Community Development and Regulatory Affairs and the Department of Community Affairs throughout. Um, the maps are not legible, so we need to replace them with maps prepared by our GIS staff. Um, and we have references to it unincorporated parts of the city and they need to be deleted. I second those. So wait, what, which, which document are you are you referring to? That's what I asked the zoning ordinance. And I have a separate there. document. We are on the moratorium. The, the resolution. Okay. Yes. So that's what I asked. Okay. 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 Uh, we're in there with Mr. Lee. Okay. I have a few comments. Um, I actually have questions, but I'm going to ask you to respond after I say all my stuff because I don't want to use my five minutes of responses. I'm going to try not to use the whole five minutes. But first, um, I'm not sure that it's possible or even advisable to institute a piecemeal moratorium. So I'm, I'm concerned about our vulnerability of litigation if we institute a moratorium that's only for certain um, zoning classifications or only for certain things, if, if that I'm worried about that, and I would like you to speak to that. I also would like you to speak to, um, I, I do think that we have had, we have put developers on significant public notice that a substantial change to our zoning ordinance is coming. Uh, we had an election in 2016. I, I think that there was, there's proof that that was noticed because many people rushed to put permits in between the time of our election for cityhood in November of 2016 and our election of council in May of 2017, there was a surge of applications. So people knew that something was coming and tried to get it in. Then immediately after we were elected, we began to, to issue moratoriums after moratoriums. We've been issuing moratoriums since 2017. So it's clear that there's some sort of substantial change that's coming to our zoning ordinance. So I just want to talk about the legality of, of what will happen if we keep this until August. And then we make a, we make radical changes to our zone because I do think those things are coming. Um, lastly, I will say that I think a nine month moratorium is a bad idea. But what I think is a worse idea is that at our very first meeting of city council, um, Councilwoman Gilliard made an impassioned plea for us to look at our comprehensive plan and our zoning ordinance. That was 16 months ago. The very first department that we brought across was zoning, planning and zoning. And 16 months later, we have made no changes to the ordinance. So I feel like the only way to get this prioritized is to have a moratorium until we get it done. Um, so if you ask for my plan, 
my plans are to continue this moratorium until we have a zoning. Okay, let me just say something here. I agree on the competition between the zoning ordinance and things that make sense. I fully agree with that. But I want the public to understand is that this city, much like the Congress that was incorporated, was run on the backs of you, residences. And to balance that out, we need to have good sound. And I, I emphasize the word good and sound. Good and sound commercial development. Mr. Khalid, I think you you hit the point I wanted to make, and that was that I agree with the more the more terms in fact. But I think that the moral term should be specific. In other words, if you're not going to have warehouses, we're going to put a moral term on warehouses until such and such a time. We have had developers who come in, and Mr. Pat can tell you, who come in earlier and started development and were cut off. Good sound development that was cut off. And until such time as the moral term was lifted. Only to find out that, that once they were given a date, instead of lifting that moratorium, we were given another moratorium. Uh, that is not good for sound, good, sound businessmen, or good, sound business companies who want to come into our community that we can be proud of. But we have to be very careful. Uh, and I think our economic development director, he got the easy job he down. He ain't got but one area to develop, or two areas to develop. He got the easy job in town. Because he can't do nothing to know with no place else. And uh, one of those areas got, I got an outstanding development coming. Right now, had that person put a moratorium on it, it would not have been a conversation. And it's something that everybody's going to be proud of when it comes. So I just want to make that comment that I hear what you're saying, but if someone wants to come in and put a hospital on your front door, you might want to lead a hospital you know, and, and, and continue to, to make a blanket statement like, I don't want anything. Sometimes that can hurt. But in, but in, in fact, I realize what's going on. I agree with what's going on. I just think that we need to take it on a specific, on specific issue rather than a, a blanket moratorium. Thank you so much. Right. Are we done? We're done. Yeah, the motion, the recommended motion is to table this item in, until later tonight following adoption of the zoning code. I, I make a motion to table. She's speaking. We said it was the last speaker, but she's going to allow her to speak. Um, I just really want to make this point so the public will know Mr. Khalid is correct. Since May the 1st, I have been talking about it, and talking about it, and talking about it. And this last round of getting a consultant took over six months. Nothing has changed. This is not our complaint. This is not our city's complaint. This is the county's complaint. Just like uh, Mr. Venable uh, so eloquently told us not too long ago, it has changed. And, um, I don't know what it's going to take for that to happen, but that is, is well overdue. And so that, that's what you really hear, the differences up here. And, it's, it, and believe it or not, every district is so different. We just made a sum of the whole, but we're real, real different, even in terms of the districts and how they're designed, what the map looks like. And so um, I'm, I'm finally glad that the consultant is coming. And I know that this is going to take time. Right. Uh, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we call for the last time. Please help me out with this. Uh, I move to table this uh, resolution until after we adopt the, the zoning resolution tonight. I second. Property moves the second any further discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes unanimously, Mr. Clerk. I think Mr. Baker, did you want? Okay. 
The next item is a resolution approving the memorandum of understanding between the City of South Fulton and Union City for the use of Union City's court facilities resolution 2018-078. I would ask that we uh, make a motion and take into consideration of the discussion, so I'll entertain it. I'll make a motion to approve the agreement. Second. Probably move the second discussion. Hearing none. Wait, wait, no, no, no. We got to get our vote. We got to get our vote. That was ready. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cleacher, do, I just wanted to know if we have any update on when we might have a facility of our own. We do not. Not today. We will not. Let me let Mrs. Gia can you hear us up on a little talk. Go ahead, Mr. Gia. Does this contract for a one year period or a two year period? It's just for one year. Mm -hmm. one. And we can opt out any time during the one year? Uh, city attorney like 90 days that. notice or something? Yeah, there is an opt out notice. Okay. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? That passes unanimously. Mr. Burke? Okay, that takes you to the next item, a resolution to activate the City of South Fulton Development Authority to appoint a Board of Directors and to provide for filling with the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Resolution 2018-079. I have been a motion we can have discussion. I was going to make a motion to approve resolution 2018-0079. Okay, uh, for the appointees, so this is a resolution for you to work towards establishing the development of the right? So we have more do we have more training? Are you going to walk us through the process? Let us know when we speak to start submitting people that um, we think we can do candidates with this, how many people, do we know how many people are going to be on this? So uh, well good afternoon, Mayor Council. Um, real quickly, this is just to establish the development authority. As we've talked about uh, previously, we will have a period where we will talk about the type of members that we want to be on the authority. Uh, what type of uh, you know, backgrounds and things of that nature. But then we'll bring another resolution where we'll appoint those members to the authority. So we're not appointing members today. Uh, we're just actually establishing that. And then my goal is uh, by January to actually have some type of agreement where we we'll bring those members back to the council um, because there will be uh, a development authority training in February that we hope to get these folks to uh, once appointed. So do you know whether or not we're going to have um, eight members uh, or each person have an appointee? Well, as we had talked about uh, at the training, and I know everyone didn't have an opportunity to come, but we had Dan McCray come and talk to the council. Um, a development authority could be seven members or nine members. We can work that out over the next uh, month. And so when we make that resolution for appointment, we're going to decide if we're going to appoint seven or we're going to appoint nine. I, that's not a decision that has to be made tonight. Okay. Is it okay to recommend that we probably address this at the top of the year? Because we have some boards that we have established. Um, it's not been elected in, but we have it, they have it activated. So I hope this doesn't, doesn't happen to this group. So I'm asking that we. Well, there are statutory, statutory laws that this board will have to follow. So it'll be a lot different. It's not like a committee or, or another appointed board. Okay, thank you. All right, Mayor Brooklyn Baker. First of all, I'd like to thank, uh, thanks Mr. Pike for kind of jumping on something that I started some time ago. I would have appreciated to be a little bit more um, implemented in the process given that this was something that I uh, initiated. However, um, I wanted to direct the question of when it came back to the city uh, attorney in reference to the numbers. I think Mr. Pike gave reference to the possibility of making that number at the top of the year, but I would have included seven uh, 
and I would like to add that now upon adoption. And is that possible to add that? And we right have to vote that now. I mean, that's just my recommendation. I don't need to go to that. That's my recommendation. It's accepted. So, so I have not vetted this thoroughly, and, and here's the reason why. So we have. Um, I have three members of council who I've been working with as far as the development authority. So those three members who were sponsoring this was Mayor Pro Tem Baker, who's the primary sponsor, and then Councilwoman Jackson and Councilwoman Gums. So I've not had the opportunity to actually sit down with them and see what their preferences would be before putting this on, on the agenda. Um, some of the questions I do have, I, my preference would be when we put this on the agenda, to answer a couple of questions with the initial activating resolution and the those questions would be how many members are you going to establish seven or nine you have the discretion to pursue it to the statute to establish seven or you can establish nine so i would make that designation um something that was presented to the council and then also um whether a member of council will serve because you do have the ability under the um the development authority statute to appoint a member of council. You may not want to do that, but um, also for the process of appointment of members, as well as the initial term of members. Um, so those are just some of the items that that I wanted to include it that I would have discussed with this. Now I didn't. Uh, Mr. Pike did ask me to provide feedback on this, but I didn't have the opportunity to confer with the sponsoring council members first. So I felt that it was not in my place to just arbitrarily pick. Um, processes for that, so that's why I didn't know I'm, that. I'm clear. I guess that um, I didn't know. I knew, of course, after we got the agenda that it was coming forward, but had I known, I would have um, conferred with my co-sponsors in reference to this. The only thing I can say that I would like to do is make a motion uh, to adopt seven appointees. And outside of that, uh, whether or not we approve or we recommend an individual from council to be a part of it. That's something that we can come back to uh, possibly at the top of the year. So, so yeah, so yeah, of course, definitely. I'm sure you I would ask for you to One, eight people up here. Well, I mean, majority votes. Well, at this point, I just asked the question: Is eight people sitting up here? Just so we know, I'm not eliminating anyone. I'm saying that there, I am making a motion for seven individuals. There's a second. Yeah, there's a second. Well, I, I think, Mayor, if it's seven, you could, if, if that is what they wanted, you could, if the council, that's the will of the council, you could determine who those seven members are who appoint in between now and January. You could also look at, I think the reason Mr. Pike is saying that you want to implement the required uh, pieces for the development authority is to put that in place and wholly leave the implementing resolution until January because you may decide you want nine and it could be all eight of you plus a member or it could, I mean, all eight people appoint plus a member beyond the board. You you have a lot of different things that you can flesh out in between now and the implementation, but the staff desire is to put in place the actual development authority so you can take full advantage of the tasks that you put, you know, that stuff that you put in place. Uh, our desires to determine where would we, where we're gonna have the courts, where we're gonna have city hall, all of those things Part of it is leveraging the development authority to be able to get done the things that you can. Right. So, that's, so that's, I believe that making a decision on the seven or nine is something that you could delay until January until you have time. About. Right. And let, no. but, but if it is the will of the council, I think you can still decide on who the seven are during that time. Uh, can I? So here's, here's a problem that you have too. You have to submit your activating resolution to the Secretary of State, and if you piecemeal it where you have a document that doesn't accurately reflect what you're going to do with this board, then just keep in mind that you're going to be sending the, the Secretary of State a document that 
unless we establish the number of members tonight, it's not going to have a clear directive to the Secretary of State of how many members you're going to have and all the other items that, that I named as far as how you're going to appoint. Well, I totally disagree with that. Well, let me just say this. I think that um, the legislation that, that creates this development authority is fine. I think we have time to, to, to shuffle out what is it that we want to do. All right. And I just asked ask the simple question. And I haven't gotten my answer. You know, except, except the fact that you can do what you want to do, but you have both to do it. So that's not a good answer in some places. So uh, uh, I, I agree with you, Mr. 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 Jones, uh, but to, to rush in and say these things, I hear what the attorney saying, I just don't agree with it. Thank you. Uh, so that's Mr. Mr. Lewis is next. I mean, I don't want anything done in the spirit of divisiveness. If there's eight people on this board, we should not be appointing seven people to the development authority. If you have seven people appointed to the uh, development authority, that means someone is going to be excluded from making a recommendation. That's not fair. And this board is going to be responsible for making major investment decisions on behalf of the city of South Fulton. Everyone's vision should be represented. Not only that, once you appoint somebody to this board, they can't be removed by majority of vote of this council. It would have to be done by the state, correct? And so we need to be deliberate, we need to be intentional, and we need to be fair when we appoint people to our development authority. And it should not be seven people. I'm for nine. I think we should appoint eight people and then let those eight people appoint the ninth person. This is going to be major for the city of South Fulton, and we need to show our residents that we are not being divisive. Okay, uh, so, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago, we talked about a legislative process. Clearly, we need one, because tonight we had a thousand page SOP that just magically appeared on our agenda that no one knew about. We have an ordinate, we have a resolution for a development authority that the author didn't know was going to be on the agenda. Yet there are many things that people have submitted and have been in the queue for weeks that are not on the agenda. So I do hope that tonight we approve a legislative process and that that spreadsheet, that that process includes everyone, not just mayor and council, but department heads, Anybody that has legislation in the pipeline, we should all know what it is. The public should know what it is, and we should know when it's coming. No one should be at a meeting surprised, like, oh, what is this doing on here? That's issue number one. Issue number two is we have a motion on the floor that has been seconded by, uh, the motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem. I have seconded it. Um, it. It says that we would have seven members and that they would be approved by a majority vote of council. So we know that we have, we, we've answered the questions. We know the seven, we know that there will be seven, and we know they'll be approved by a majority vote. This is not the ethics committee. This is not everybody gets to appoint somebody that you like. For development authority, people have to be highly qualified, which means that we can all submit 20 names apiece. We can take applications, but we're still going to vote there has to be a majority of council that votes for each of the seven members. This isn't, I, I'm going to appoint somebody, and you appoint somebody, and you appoint somebody. That's not how you do a development authority. Because first of all, there may not be anyone that I know. I may not know anyone, and I, and I don't right now, that lives in the city of South Fulton that I think would be qualified to be on a development authority. So I might not make an appointment at all. I might just be voting. Um, and I think that we could go... I think, I think that we could go forward, and that, and that is no disrespect to any of the people in the room, but we had a very lengthy presentation by a very capable attorney, and there was a, there was a list of things that, that you needed to have. And one of, them, one of them is that you need to have the ability to bring money. And you also, this is not a meet once a month kind of thing. This is you're going to be working your butt off while you're on this. And so you need to have plenty of time. This isn't like a one meeting a month thing. You're going to be meeting probably as often as we are. So. Um, I think that we can be deliberative in this process, and at some point, as a council, we're going to have to learn how to make a decision as a group. 
It can't, every decision can't be, I'm gonna get somebody and you get somebody and you got somebody. Sometimes we're just gonna have to make a decision that we agree. I think that was a good time to start. Uh, okay, um, I think it is, well, I just have a feel for it, right? Whenever anybody makes a motion, I've never seen us have a question as to why we make our motion. Like, I don't think I've ever had to volley back and forth with any of my colleagues prior to this one as to why I make a motion. It's either voted up, seconded or not, and then we normally move on. Uh, the reason this came up like this is because I received this over the holiday weekend, and I don't even know, I didn't hear or converse with my uh, co-sponsors to get their chimes in regards to it. But if we're gonna vote and move forward, I at least wanted my position to be in the ordinance that I sponsored. My position was seven. If that was something that people didn't want, I would think that they wouldn't vote for it. And that's just, I think that that's common. That's the democracy. I, I, say what I, I say what I made my motion for, but I don't feel like I need to explain in detail to anybody up here if they disagree, they just disagree. Thank you. Well, I when someone makes a motion and someone seconds it, there's something called a discussion. And that's what we're having a discussion. And I have asked time and time again for a listing of all ordinances, all resolutions, and all sponsors that are in queue. I have asked for this every council meeting and I have yet to receive it. Why is there only three sponsors involved in this? Because had none, some of us didn't even know this was in place. But I will tell you, I went to a training class last year for this very subject, development authority. So I would have liked to have some say in this as well. So why is it only being, you know, um, why are there only three people working on this? Secondly, you know, again, we do, I feel like we should have nine people. And to piggyback off of what somebody said that we don't have qualified people in the city of South Fulton, our people fall <coughs> off the city of Atlanta to create the city. Amen. Our, our Amen. city fought, stood up against legislators yes. who stopped us. Our city has attorneys. Our city has CPAs. Our city has people with financial background. We have highly qualified people in the city of South Fulton who can make investment decisions on our behalf in development authority. So I feel highly insulted to say that we, for somebody to say that we don't have qualified people in our city to serve on this board. We are smart, we are rich, we are dignified. We have highly qualified people in the city to serve on development authority. Well, uh, first, um, let me just briefly say I want to apologize. Um, I'm not privy to which elected officials are working on projects. We actually were going to bring this to the council earlier. Uh, we actually pulled it off the agenda because I learned at that time that uh, there were folks working on it and deferred back to the city attorney uh, to bring it back again today with the input. So. Uh, with that respect, I want to apologize. It was not the intent. Uh, you do have to forgive me. Uh, I've been an elected official before and worked for elected officials, and this is the first time I've been in this pattern where legislation is sponsored by council members. So I was just doing what I know to do uh, to move forward these items that everyone was talking to me about economic development. I'm doing the things and the tasks that helps us move forward with economic development. It's not my intention to offend anyone uh, in any way. Um, but what the items I have for you are the things that you all paid me and have asked me to do. Uh, so I appreciate the opportunity, but I think this is something that's going to move us in the right direction. Uh, the things that you all talk to me individually on, this item will help us do that. I will speak a little bit to the appointment that this is not a board that you make individual appointments to. It's very clear in state law that the body votes on each individual person that is on the board. Uh, so that's very clear in state law. Term limits is already spelled out in state law. You don't have to put it in the resolution. 
authority members are appointed for four years, period. It's in the state law. It's not anything we have to put in the resolution. So this resolution that you have before you is a resolution that is utilized by cities all over the state. It's been vetted, it's effective, and it's something that I think will help us move in the right direction. Uh, we have a board on call for the board of but let me just say this. As long as we up here this day, and one of these numbers up here not clear about something, we ask a question they have to like to ask. Uh, my question was very simple, and it, it didn't go to the heart of whether everybody needed to have an appointment. My question was, why that number? And I think that was a perfectly legitimate uh, question to answer. So I'm sorry we got up on this tangent about something. That was the only reason I answered it. And anybody that wants to ask a question, anybody who has proposed legislation, they have the right to do it. All right, let's vote. We have two motions on the yeah. floor. The, the second motion, which I suspect is before you now, was <coughs> made by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Baker and seconded by Council Member Khalid, and that was establishing uh, seven appointees to this. Is that what we're voting on now? What's the other one? The main motion was made by Council Member Rao and seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Baker, and that was still approved. That's correct. So we'll take the first one. So okay. why didn't you just amend the first one and to add seven people? Okay, so you, you took the, the second motion was an amendment. Okay, then I'm going to do this. Well, let's vote on the second one first. We're voting on seven people. That's what we're voting on. That's correct. All those in favor? That's uh, five to two. And then your main motion, which I assume that Council Member Rao and Baker are saying that they are agreeable to approve as amended. And that's this resolution for establishing the development authority. All those in favor? That passes you then. Okay, that takes you to the first ordinance for second reading. This is ordinance 2018-031, ordinance amending Title I administration with respect to the employment of city department heads and directors and for other lawful purposes. I'll make a motion to approve an uh, ordinance. Title 2018-031, an ordinance amendment, Title 1. Is there a second? Second. Okay, probably move to second discussion. I have this one. Okay, I'm prepared from the last one. All right. I'm the, now I wanted to read my list. Madam President, she wants to make an amendment to her motion. So your your motion title one. So council. Councilwoman Jackson, is your motion to amend subject approve subject to amendments, or is it to exactly. approve subject to amendments? The amendments. Then you you would need to state out the amendments that you would want to be subject to. Okay, the amendment is um, B, and it's. Um, the department heads and directors shall be appointed, suspended, and or removed by the city council. The city manager may recommend any department head or director for appointment, suspension, or removal. And also, uh, the department heads, wait, there's another one. Uh, that's it. What did I get, what did I get a second on, Mr. Clerk? Um, the original motion was to approve the ordinance that's in front of you, but it sounds like that's what, it, that's what I heard. The ordinance number 2018-031? Correct. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to withdraw your motion and make a new motion approving it with this amendment. Okay. So I need to withdraw this. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I said. Wait a minute, who is there a motion to withdraw? I just made a motion. Okay, the second. Probably move the second. All those in discussion? All those in favor? Oh, sorry. 
We are amending to have uh, council approval the parking yet. But well, this is in conflict with the charter. 1063 says, 1063, I'm talking to the attorney. 1063, can you? I think my recommendation is going to be if, 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 if your discussion is going to center on what legally you can and can't do, that you need to take this privately. Because what people will do is they will use what you say and they will use whatever council on Jackson says and they will use that against the city. Okay, well I just I don't have to agree with that. So I'm not gonna agree with that. I I am fine with publicly saying what I have to say. Ten sixty three, House Bill ten sixty three. Um, we went to the general assembly and it was approved by the general assembly and it gives the city manager the authority to have hiring and firing decisions on department heads. Secondly, that is what our charter is designed to do. We are a city manager, city council form of government. Our city manager is not about the person, it's about the role. Our city manager, whoever is in that role, that person deserves to hire and fire people they're responsible for, for evaluating. They are, they deserve to have the ability to build their team. Council members <coughs> should not be in the middle of hiring and firing decisions. We should not, we don't evaluate department heads. We don't deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes I have issues with some things that happen in certain divisions and I go and sit down and talk <coughs> to the city manager. And my perspective is totally different from his. And the reason it is because he's dealing with it with them on a day-to-day -day basis. And they should not feel threatened by elected officials on whether or not they should keep their jobs. I think this is going to be bad for the city. It's not going to attract the top talent to the city. And since this is going to be impacting the authority of the person that's currently sitting in this role, I would like to have his feedback on this. Uh, we've not discussed anything related to personnel outside of executive session, and so if the council would Thank want to hear sir. any feedback from me, we will need to do so in executive session. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Gunn. I mean, Ms. Rock. I just go for the record. I must end this by saying I do not agree with you serving the authority of the city manager. I think this is a conflict of the charter. Yes. Uh, Ms. Brown. I really do think, I mean, we've gone around with this conversation a couple of times. Um, I, we just need to take this. Um, yeah. I make a motion to take it. Actually, a motion that's already on. We're in discussion on a motion. We'll present a discussion on a Mr. Lee, yeah, you yeah. I, I was a parliamentarian for city council for years. Um, I just want to be clear that we have a motion on the floor to approve as amended, and we're in discussion. Is there no motion on the floor? No, you you had it. The original motion was to approve, and then you all passed a motion to withdraw that motion. So there's no motion to get passed. Okay, so I'm just I'm going to go into my comment and say, uh, with all due respect, Mayor, we need some leadership. We have we have we have an agenda that nobody even seems to agree on, and now we are making comments after we've been warned by our city attorney to not discuss personnel. We're making comments that open us up to litigation. I just think we're being reckless, and I. Um, I'm tired of seeing us be reckless on camera. Uh, I think I think we've all I think all our citizens have seen enough of that from us. So since there is no motion on the floor, I'm going to make a motion that we go into executive session wow. to discuss personnel. Wow. Second. Wow. Any discussion? I have one. I'm going to take a strong issue with what you did say. You said there's no leadership up here. I did not say that. You did say it. I said there's no leadership. I didn't say there was no leadership. Or right. well, if we need leadership, I didn't even take objection to that. Okay. 
Everybody in here has seen what goes on up here. Amen. And the only thing to hold some of this thing down would be Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> and I dare you question the chair of this, this board. And I'll say this, I want to go and discuss it in, in, in the executive session because there's some things that need to be said. And some, and some situations that need to that have happened in the past that we need to talk about on this subject. I don't say, well, I don't get upset too much up in here. But when you challenge indirectly <coughs> like me, that's another discussion for you. So let's go, let's just take a vote to go to the executive session. Let's go to the executive session. <laughs> And I would like to say for the purposes of the public that no action was taken. And I suspect you would, would desire this time, Mr. Mayor, to entertain a motion to close that executive session. I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to close the executive session. Second. I would move to second any further discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, that passes. Okay, the item you left on was the first ordinance for second reading. And we're picking up the discussion on an ordinance amending Title I administration with respect to the employment of city department heads and directors and for other lawful purposes. Ordinance 2018-031. This is this uh, uh, yes, I would like to withdraw my uh, my motion to for the ordinance, and if we need to, we'll take it up at another time. Second. I'll remove the second. Any further discussion? So what is that? Well, the motion is actually, you didn't have a motion on the floor, so your motion should be to table this issue. Okay, well, we're going to table it. Second. I'll remove the second. <laughs> so what does that mean? Do we still remain in conflict of charge? No, what that so if you table this this most this ordinance, what that means is that effective at the end of transition, then all hiring and firing of department heads will be through the city manager and he can hire and fire any department head with the no, not with the police. exception of police. It'll be for everything. If you want the exception no. of police, you need to create that, no. that exception. No, no. We're gonna, we, then we'll go back to the one that we're Well, it's in the ordinance, but your ordinance only lasts for the duration of transition. So then we need to create the ordinance to say, or amend it to say, uh, except for the police chief. Yeah, you can amend the current ordinance to yeah. say that it, to eliminate the transition limitations. Because your current your current your current ordinance says that department heads hired fired with the exception of the police chief. Right. That's what we want. But it's limited to transition. Right. So you can amend the ordinance to take out the transition limitation. Okay. Can I amend the ordinance to take out the transition limitation? Yeah. So I move to amend, I move to, to amend the to ordinance. To amend the ordinance to take out the transition limitation. Second. Mr. Kirk, you got that. Oh, and that would leave the police chief hiring firing okay, subject to the city. I mean, that, our current police chief has a contract that does not void this contract. No, it does not void this contract. Okay, all those in favor? Oh. That passes. And just for purposes of clarification, is there a document, Madam Attorney, that follows this action? There is, and it is the. Department head ordinance that's in the amendment. Okay, thank you. Mr. Frick, go ahead. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Roman numeral two, second reading. This is sponsored by Council Member Rao, ordinance 2018 040, an ordinance to establish telecommunication standards and for other lawful purposes. Uh, I entertain a motion. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So, Mayor, may I ask what to this to the sir? What is that? Um, so, we have reached out to um, the um, a partner in um, telecommunications asking them to give this item um, a look. And so there are some things that I would like to kind of bring to you that we would like to just share to ask for there to be some consideration on some of these things. Um, the 
partnership is with um, AT&T, who is a very well-known uh, telecommunication agency that deals with such things. And so they did a review and gave us some ideas as to how the ordinance could have some level of conflict, for example. Uh, there's small towers versus larger towers. They're saying that it should be as heavy for the smaller towers, that we should have a separate kind of section that speaks on that. And so with that being said, I'm asking for us to give an, an opportunity just to explore some of the recommendations that they okay. give them. Were they just got these recommendations? Yes, or were they in public with it? When we did the public comment for you. Right. So we we right. We wanted to bring it to this portion to where the um, I guess discussion because that public comment portion was for the public to speak on, okay. not necessarily on the okay. discussion piece. Okay. And man, we did. Uh, so we have circulated just like you normally do. We circulated internally, but we also circulated to key stakeholders like AT and T, uh, Comcast, others who are in the telecommunications realm. Unfortunately, they don't move as quickly as we do. We have our legal in-house, so they respond to us directly. They have to take it, send it to their legal, get their comments reviewed. But we had probably about 10 very quality comments. Some of them were seconding a lot of the things in the ordinance, but some were some nuances that we believe the body should consider. And we only received those this evening before heading over here, so we've not had a chance to distribute those to the council. Ms. Rob, are you? Tell me specifically which I'll hear. So tell me uh, specifically what they are. Sure. So, uh, for example, um, the ordinance does ban towers and parks. They believe that the larger towers, they understand that, but for smaller towers, it would be beneficial for, the, for anyone who's um, using the parks to have smaller towers there for some of the technology they could have in parks, for example. Okay. Uh, another section says that there's a $75 annual fee. They're believing that that could be in conflict with the Federal uh, Communications Commission. So they say look into that just to make sure that we're not conflicting there. In my understanding, this is a question for our attorney. Um, my understanding is that we verified that it was not in conflict with the new FCC guidelines. Yes, we, we have verified that. There's been recent changes in case law. Uh, we stayed consistent with those changes. The the, the bottom line is that AT&T would like us to make it a little bit more favorable and they want us to consider some changes that would accomplish that. I don't see a problem if there's been recent uh, proposals that have been made of looking at what they've requested because we've had other people say, can you do this? We've looked at it we said, no, we're not going to do that. And they've said, okay, we know you don't have to and they've kind of gone away. It's probably the same situation here. Uh, we can make sure it's not in conflict and so you verify that. Yeah, we can take into consideration whatever they're requesting to do, and if um, there's something that, you know, uh, can be approved, um, it's the council's discretion, and we can bring it back to you and say, look, this is your option. Do you want to do A or B? Okay. Okay. So then it was also mentioning that um, some of the requirements for smaller towers, like I mentioned before, should be for the larger towers. Um, it also says that a free application meeting is required. They said that for the smaller towers, that shouldn't necessarily be. It should be for the larger ones. Um, it also says that, um, let's see, uh, they gave some ideas on how to streamline the application process, the definitions that need to be added. They gave us a full list of different things that they feel that should be um, included. Not saying we should hear it all at 100%. I'm just saying that it, it would be probably uh, beneficial to us to consider some of these things before adoption. We may not take any of them, but I'm just making sure that if we are going to consider them, to do it before adoption. Uh, well, this is the second read, and we need to have some telecommunications guidelines in place before the end of transition. Is that correct? So is, is the world going to split apart if you don't have telecommunication guidelines before transition? No. Um, is it best practice to get them in as soon as possible? Yes. Okay. I did, do I think waiting until December 11th is is something that you, you can do. I mean, it's just going to be another three weeks that you don't have telecommunication guidelines in place. Okay. So, um, would this satisfy our public hearing requirements so we don't have to do anything additional other than uh, look at incorporating uh, possibly some of these changes? Yes, you would not have to hold a second public hearing. Okay. Uh, then I'm agreeable to the December 11th date, and I'd, li I'd like to have a meeting relative. Uh, so. okay. 
just like to ask, okay. so you, um, Mr. Long made a good point. It could have been an opportunity for your doctor to add you to come back with amendments if you want to do that. Because I, I think to have something in place, I think our attorney has opined that it's good to have something in place and it's the best practice. I think our understanding is, is that we have gotten this insight from someone that is a technical expert in telecommunications and we just want to make sure that we consider them. Normally, before it came forward, we would have expected them to respond, but as you can imagine, it takes them a lot longer. And so if the body is willing to accept your ordinance as you have it's been vetted internally and we are fine with it but we think that these insights are valuable well i will say if we adopt it tonight i do support the change relative to the small towers being on top of wrecks because we need wi-fi <laughs> gotcha. so. okay. are you this? so i i move that we adopt no we have no no, I, I, I was wrong. You was wrong? Okay. Go ahead with your motion. Section 16.3.13. However, I am amenable to deleting 
the line 687, and that applies to um, happy hour. That is the section. But there are some things in that section that I do agree with. So it sounds like your amendment is to approve the ordinance with the amendment that we add farm winery provisions as requested by Councilman Khalid and that we delete the happy hour restriction. Right. No, that we don't delete. No, that we do, that we don't. No, I want us to delete the happy hour restriction. Mm -hmm. I don't want restrictions on happy hour. Would you yield to me? I'm not going to do it. So we're we're in agreement on farm wineries. So let's just what my suggestion is. Let's just first say that we're all in agreement on farm wineries and just debate the happy hour provision. So and how then, about we do this? Like, how about right, we do a motion to amend the ordinance to include the provisions on farm wineries? Right. And, get it and then we, we do well, it One second, can you? I'm I'm on the floor. I think that the farm winery should be consistent with the brunch bill, though, because the wording is. Tours should start, meaning that if we say tours start before 11 on Sunday, then they wouldn't have the ability to serve alcohol before 11. And what I'm saying is that tours can begin before 11, but the alcohol should be consistent with the state, I mean, with the, uh, with the uh, brunch bill that we just passed. I agree with that. So that would be to include the farm winery provisions requested by Councilman Khalid with the exception that we change the language to make all hours consistent with the brunch bill that we just with, with the brunch bill. Because that's what people voted for. Mr. Lee, you take to the queue that you Okay, so so just so just to be clear, because I did say that. I think wineries should be able to start tours before eleven provided that they do not sell the wine until so you can do the whole tour you just can't serve one. The, the end usually on a wine tour the end is the serving of the of the wine so what i'm saying is that if it's consistent we we agree all i'm saying is that we agree i will say that there are several places in this legislation that do not reflect the updated change of the point of um if we look at because the, the brunch bill took this selling from 12:30 to 11, correct? Correct. Right. So, but if we look at the, I mean, if we look at the the thing wherever growlers are, what page is that? Because um, I know I definitely saw. Uh, if anyone can help me and just shout out where growlers are. On, Page 18. Okay, so on page 693. Page 644, line 63. Okay, page 644. I'm sorry, you bear with us. This book is 1,500 pages today. Okay. Um, on page, okay, page 644, line 693. Um, Okay, no, I'm sorry. Let's go to page 646, right? So, actually, before we leave, before we go to a new issue, can we approve the last issue? What this, These are connected. Let me just explain. Okay. So, if we look at lines, um, lines 749 on page 646, it says, no tasting of beer or malt beverages shall be permitted on Sundays before 1230. That is not consistent with the law that we just passed. So this this legislation this I think that this was created or copy pasted from something before we moved it back to eleven. So I'm just saying we need to move it back to eleven. I'll I'll, 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 I'll go ahead. Okay, so Councilman Morales sent you an email. He was a copy on the email uh, requesting for you to change that. To make that consistent with the brunch bill, that's that's what she spoke on during the first meeting. And then subsequent of the council meeting, she sent you an email that needs of uh, some items that needed to be changed, and that was one of them. So it should be consistent with the brunch bill. 
No free tasting of beer and wine beverages shall be permitted between the hours of 12 8 and no 12 a.m. and 8 a.m. That's correct. That should be the same. But where it comes down to Sundays before 12 30 p.m., it should, that should be changed to be consistent with the lunch period law. Okay, so how about we, we make the motion based on what you've discussed so far to make that's why I said okay. all brunch bill hours to make all hours consistent with the brunch bill and right. to accept the farm winery change and to eliminate happy hour. No, we, we're, we're going to do happy hour set. Okay. Just okay. brunch bill and farm winery. Okay, now let's go back. We got that. So let's go well, back. Well, can you vote on that first so we won't have this laundry list to vote on at the end? So I move that. I move that we accept the amendment to make this alcohol ordinance consistent with the brunch bill. And now, to accept the fine winery, the farm winery, the fine, the fine winery, farm, farm wine winery provisions recommended by Councilman Cleave. Recommended by Councilman Cleave. I second. I move the second in further discussion. Yes. Okay. Ms. Gilliard, you're up. Okay. So, um, alcoholic uh, beverages, the, the um, police department, the police department, oh, oh my <coughs> um, the police department um, investigate, does a background check for those that are applying for the license, right? And so, um, there's a fee for the license. Who collects the fee? On page 635, it says all taxes collected are due and payable to the tax commission. Monthly, 24 to 29, I think. Tax commission, I don't think that the tax commission is but should be in there. But I'm, I just want to know, who is it that is over the license part and the collection of fees. So I spoke with the um, city treasurer, the um, chief financial officer, and his recommendation is that the business license department handle the, I have it written down if I can go to it. His recommendation is that the business license department be in charge of the license fee collection, billing, and tax return assessment and ensuring the excise tax collection compliance. So I think I, I think that that's reasonable and I think that that's how we should do that's That would be a, a recommendation that, that I would want to make it seems reasonable to me that for, for the finance to collect the fees. So I think that we agree that I think there are some some thoughts and some recommendations. I think you're right about uh, finance collecting a fee. I don't. I believe finance wants programs to do it. I think as an administrator, I believe there should be a separation between church and state in that manner. And so finance should be the ones who collect those fees. And so that's what I would be recommending to council. Right. So with that adjustment, then we would have. That's all I was going to say. It should okay. be finance. Yeah. With that adjustment, we would have finance collecting the, the fee and then business license department being charged with the billing, tax return assessment, and ensuring the excise compliance. So do we need to vote to approve that? Yeah, you would need to vote to approve, to approve that. But you also have the one that you still didn't vote on right. I'm with the farm right. winery and the brunch bill. So if you want to vote on that and then we can vote on this one, get those two out the way. I move that we, uh, I move that we. So you already have a motion. Uh, Your motion is already on the floor. Would it be seconded by council member Khalid and that's making all hours consistent with the brunch bill and accepting the uh, provisions regarding farm wineries as referenced by council member Khalid. So do we vote on that? Or do we no, no. We're asking you to vote yeah. on that motion. Right now? Yes. Okay. So, so that you, you go to the next. Yeah. Um, 
I'm excited about this one because I've been waiting on the um, on this piece. But the lottery, um, who purchased the sign? The sign? Or that's why I've been waiting on the sign. I beg your pardon. Yeah, because basically this is what we've been waiting on. The water money. So the signage going in. So the, the stores will be mandated to do this. And how will they know? Well, this is currently in Fulton County's code. So we're, we're not, if you want to make a change, then we can make it today. And then they would just have the responsibility as a citizen to be aware of when the council makes legislation. You said it's currently important. Yeah, I've been this asking is the question about the signs since, since we started and they said we had to wait because I passed the lottery ordinance. So I was asking about the lottery signs in the stores. I was told we had to wait till this alcohol um, ordinance was passed. We're here. So you're saying it was already there? No, what I'm saying is, are you referring to a loitering, a loitering provision that's in the alcohol code? Yes, in other words, supposed in the stores, like the convenience stores where you can see all the young people hanging out. This is a piece that I, that I passed, and I wanted to make sure that the stores were doing what they're supposed to do. So how soon can we implement? You're saying it was already in Fulton County, that what you're No, what, I'm, what I was saying, that, saying is that if there is a loitering provision that's in this document, then the stores are already aware of it because we have basically adopted Fulton counties. But it sounds like you're saying that the loitering provision is not in the alcohol code. You're referencing the, the legislation that you previously adopted. Is okay, that in the year? Because I was told that it was not. It was not. Um, Okay. All right. So you have a loitering ordinance that we already adopted. Right. So that's already in, in effect. And we've been waiting on this. Right. In this, this is the alcohol. Remember where this is where if you have a, a gas station, this is specific to gas stations. And convenience stores, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, where you have consistent uh, activity then they are required to strengthen their security measures. They're, they are required to uh, go through a security assessment by the police department, adhere to the recommendations from the security assessment. So if the recommendations come back where they need to have LED lighting, they need to add signage, they need to hire uh, additional off-duty police officers, um, they need to add surveillance, then they would have to adhere to those recommendations or risk losing their uh, uh, liquor license. Okay. So your loitering is already in place. Okay. You still have the floor on the Okay. So they're not using the signs or not. The loitering signs is in your ordinance. It should be. I understand that, but I'm saying nobody had signs up. And everybody, every time I asked, we were saying we were waiting on this particular ordinance. Okay. So as soon as we pass that, you do the force you want. Excuse me. You still have the force. Um, what, she, she still do you mind if we, add, if we ask uh, Chief Madison to have an address that? Yeah, because we need to see something. Okay. Um, Chief Madison, do you have uh, when was the uh, loitering daughter's ordinance passed? It's been a while. Okay. It was before you got And okay. um, basically, I've been told that we had to wait on this piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about this piece. Okay. But in other words, but now that you're saying that, what? It actually should have been erected already. Uh, if, if, if the ordinance was already passed, it should have already been forged. So we're going to erect the sign. What this uh, provision here does, it ties. The, um, the owner's responsibility to the loitering uh, process to make sure that they're notifying people that loitering is not allowed outside of our stores, and if they do that, then they're subject to um, um, have their uh, liquor license revoked. So how do we go about letting these individuals know this? Because I know the stores on, you know, where I where I am, they don't have signs. Right. And well, we we know some other stores, but they don't even. That's one thing that we can work with code enforcement on because what we want to try to do is go through a lot of the different, uh, a lot of the different um, uh, 
strip malls and things of that nature to make them aware of the loitering ordinance and that they would have to erect those that that sign on their properties and, where, and how it should be erected. So it's, it's a matter of education uh, with respect to the business. Chief, one other thing to protect it. We make sure those signs are consistent and have the proper code. I'm assuming that the signs were defined in the code. Yeah, we'll just have to look look at the board boarding ordinance and all work with you to the federal attorney definitely has to have the code on for it to be effective. Right. Okay. But can I re reiterate my request that we that we adopt this as we go so we don't lose pieces? I suggested that. Because we have, we, we still haven't voted on the brunch and the winery, uh, uh, and then we have to, after that, we have to vote on Gilliard. Correct. Yeah, people in the queue. <laughs> well, I have, I have Ms. Woods in the queue. So I'm in the queue now, so I'm going to suggest that we uh, vote on it as we go. But the First Amendment, can you repeat, uh, Mayor, can you ask to the manager to repeat what, what's on the floor, what I asked for again? Yes, sir. All the hours in the legislation to be consistent with the brunch bill and to accept the um, provisions regarding farm wineries as referenced by Councilmember Glee. So can we go ahead and vote on that? Is this enough vote? We, it's well, on the floor. All right, just vote. All right, just vote. We're not approving the bill. Just yeah. 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 Okay. So, and then we have Councilman Glee's happy hour. No, that was the Madison Amendment. The second amendment was to have finance. Yeah, Listen, you haven't gotten that happy hour. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I haven't got that. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Well, somebody needs to get in the queue. So I just I spoke. Think, it's my time to talk. I know <clears throat> okay, the second, the second motion amendment was to allow finance to collect the excise tax in addition to because we have it here currently 1160 on the line 1166 such application for renewal must be submitted to the city police department i don't think the application for renewal should be we need to have a discussion should the application for renewal be submitted to the police department or should we should renewals be handled by the finance department as well, well if it's been determined that the uh, business is a nuisance if we've generated enough complaints that we certainly want to weigh in on the renewal process. And so if, you know, for instance, we keep having loitering outside of specific businesses, then we want to make that recommendation that that, um, that, that license not be renewed, but we certainly want to make that before the body. Okay. That's a line of legislation. Okay. All right. So we should be good on that. Okay. Okay. So can I read Gilliard's um, motion? Yeah. Okay. 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 So what was Gil, because uh, I want to address the happy hour. So, so you want to vote on Gilly's amendment first before I go to the happy hour? Yeah, I have it written. I mean, okay, okay. So Gilliard's uh, motion was to amend to allow finance to collect the license fee, but the business license department to be in charge of billing, tax return assessment, and ensuring excise compliance. And should we say renewals that is not considered nuisances? Well, I don't think we're going to know that until it's been evaluated, Just which is going to require it. All right. So, so you have Gilliard, and are you second? Yes. Who second? I second. Okay. Copy rule the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll go with that. Yeah, I, I think that's where the confusion is. I, I have, I would have concerns about our program folks during during the billing. I, Ms. Winfield, could you come up forward? I don't know if uh, who all staff is here. Can we discuss some of those thoughts and concerns? to be able to calculate the certain percentages uh, related to alcohol taxation. You know? 
your accountants and the financial team will have the expertise to be able to do those necessary calculations and then generate the bills to the businesses to be able to make sure that we're collecting the appropriate portions that are due to the city. I think that's also why the uh, resources that we asked for earlier in the year, including the RDS and some of those others, are housed in finance. And so to be able to appropriately do that, we want to leverage those. Right. Actions. So once we pass this, what do you get with your department heads and work out the SOPs around that? So that piece, of, that's a CFO fiscal activity, okay. not a programmatic. I think that's what we're saying is that the expertise and the responsibility should not be on the operation side. Right. We believe that's a taxation fiscal okay. management activity. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but we have, we have to remember that the RDS is managed by business license. It's not managed by finance. Business license manages the RDS. RDS, RDS is under business license. Finance, business license is not under finance. So the billing, the correcting will still be done by RDS but under business license. So under the appropriate model, the programmatic team would assess the application fees just as we would with any other applications that are being submitted to community development, economic development, and other departments. Correct. However, when it comes to actually going out and making sure that businesses are um, remitting the appropriate amounts based upon the, uh, their sales and those type of things, again, that requires calculations that, were, that should have a fiscal uh, expertise associated with them. So the RDS would be the team that collects those application fees on the front end when an application is made, but in terms of once the business is conducted and making sure that the city is uh, collecting its appropriate share, then that's a that's more of a financial component that requires another level of expertise beyond what the program that is best provide. I, I, I agree with that. So, so we should vote on what you recommended. So basically, you're determining who's going to assess the returns and ensure compliance. And the competing sides are the fiscal department would like it to be the business license and the city managers. Is this the green? Just be clear that there are several parts. The first part would be if someone has, is applying for alcohol license has to have background checked by the police. Then thereafter, the billing to have that, it's under RDS, which is controlled under business license. Okay, but we're saying Then, no, the, the administration is under business license. They're going out to see that they are implementing, they have all what is needed is business license. Finance has no manpower to go out and inspect. Inspection is done by business license. The city manager, what are you, what are you, what is your recommendation? So we can move on to the half hour. <coughs> Uh, Let's I see what is think, done now, currently, what is being done currently. I kind of think we, we're saying the same thing, and we, we just got to divvy it up. Programmatic portion is done, the front end and the applications, et cetera, et cetera, are brought in by the uh, business licensing staff. I think we're all clear on that. I think the concern is, is once items have been remitted, I'm, I'm sorry, funds have been remitted, et cetera, et cetera, you are now looking at has uh, Chief Meadows Beer Brewery submitted the appropriate uh, amount and that portion should be done by finance because of the calculation, no et cetera, et cetera. I think we're no the, I think we're saying the same thing and we just need clarity in the document to, to highlight that. Well, that's and so, it. And so that sounds like an SOP internal process that you all need well, to work out back in, but how do you But I think it's order? spelled out it's in the ordinance. Am I correct? It is, it's in the ordinance now. That the police, how do, how do you, police uh, does not uh, attorney that. Walker, how should this amendment be, uh, how should we uh, fix this amendment so we can move on? 
Sorry. So I currently have application and fee to business license. Everyone's no one's disputing that. Evaluation and recommendation by the police chief. It sounds like there's no dispute with that. Now, who is going to assess and evaluate the returns that come in? That's what it is. So we're, we're in agreement on that. And then someone is going to have to enforce compliance. Enforce compliance. That. Well, that's going to be going to businesses and saying we didn't get a return from you. We're looking Inspection. at returns and saying that it just doesn't look right. That's business. That's business. Right. Correct. Right. So, I'm sorry, there's actually an employee that does just inspections for business licenses. So, that's already someone who's inspecting yeah. and, and we, the ordinance had just combined them. So, it's just splitting those things out. That's that's the piece that she's working on. Okay. So, Okay, so I'll, I'll re repeat what you said so we can vote on the rule on the happy hour. No, I just want to make a suggestion. I think we've been talking for a minute. I just want to make a suggestion. Can I yield? Good. Yeah, wait a second. But I have to get to, we have one more section here. Okay. Yeah, really, I, I just want to make a suggestion. Can we say that finance will do the calculation? Business license, the business license department will do the collection. Calculation, collection. So, this is what I have written I have application and fee to business license, evaluation and recommendation to the police chief, finance will assess the returns, and business license will enforce compliance. Correct. Okay, uh, okay. The, the screen you're in the queue. Okay, that was it. Okay. So, you can move to accept that as stated. I, I, I move you to accept that as stated. And if you come back around for the second time, Ms. Willis, would you vote by minute? Okay, so, so first of all, I got you, Ms. Willis. First of all, I would like to move that we we uh, accept that amendment as stated by the city attorney. I need a second. Second. Property moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those in favor. That passes. Okay. Um, so. Now I would like to, I would like for us. I'm going to make a motion and then we can debate it. Yes, good. I'm going to make a motion that we delete the happy hour provision. I think it's 16-3013. Can we? Can you amend that to delete and make it consistent as allowed by law? I move that we delete and make it consistent as allowed by law. Second. Property moved. Second. In discussion. Yes. yes. So, I'm not, it's not really, I'm not trying to make this a lengthy debate. I just need clarification more so than anything else. Okay. So, the reason I said just believe it was um, 687. Okay. Line 687. Y'all okay. be there with us. This is a 1400 page book. Page 643. Okay, I got it. So requiring or encouraging the purchase of a second alcoholic beverage at the same time another alcoholic beverage is purchased or before the first such beverage is consumed, I don't have a problem with that. That shouldn't have anything to do with having that. That, should, that you shouldn't be able to purchase uh, two alcoholic beverages before the one before the first one is consumed. Well, the only thing I would change is the happy hour. That's, all, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't have a problem. All the thing I'm asking is that we leave the section as is, but we should not, uh, line 687 is the intent, it says the, it is the intent of this section to prohibit activities typically associated with promotions referred to as happy hour. The reason that it said that because sometimes when you have a happy hour, and you coming on the cusp of a happy hour ending, you would have people ordering more than one drink to get it at the price of happy hour. That's what I do. What I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is take that out. Take out the happy hour. But I think we, people should be allowed to purchase more than one drink at one time. They should. No, they should. <laughs> the requirement or encouraging the purchase of a second alcoholic beverage at the same time another alcoholic beverage is purchased. For the first, first, the first such beverage is, I mean, is uh, beverage has been consumed. 
That's saying if I have a if I have a wine uh, a glass of wine in front of me, and before I finish this wine, I'm saying give me another. Yes. yes, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say this. <laughs> when the sign, when the sign, when somebody by and say it's the last call. Okay, I'm gonna you know, you. Okay. Let's get ready to vote on this. One. All right. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Willis, you still in the queue? No, I'm saying go ahead and make your motion. Please. No, no, my motion is that we delete that we delete the happy hour provision. That we delete the happy hour prohibition section completely. Second. Second. Okay. Second. We've already made that motion in second. <laughs> no, we're now we're just we're ready. I'm going to the previous question. Yeah, I'll do a whole yeah. cell. Move the previous question. You got it. You just have to know that. Yeah. On the previous yeah. question? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we properly moved the second on the previous question. So All those in favor? Everything's in. That, no, no, excuse me, excuse me. You said you want to move the previous question. I'm doing that. Okay. Uh, this vote. Okay, that passes. Now we'll bring up the, the main motion. The, the main motion is the amendment. <laughs> to delete section 16-3013 for getting happy hours. Probably move the second in discussion. All those in favor? That passes, Mr. Burke, go ahead. Now we're going to the alcohol. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, are there any other amendments to this particular document? So I would just like to clarify that I put a provision at the bottom of this that gives me the authority to go back through. I mean, this is a 500-page document that we're accepting from the county to go back through and make sure that the name, everything's consistent. Like when it refers to board of commissioners, um, that we've made all those changes. So those are proofing and editing changes. So I just wanted you to be aware that there is a provision that I've added at the bottom of this to allow me to, to make those adjustments. So I move that we adopt. I move that we adopt ordinance number 2018-045 as amended. Second. Property moves and second. Discussion. Uh, who's in the queue? Nobody's in the queue. I'm in the queue. I'm trying to get in the queue. I don't know what's going on. one of the questions. I just want to know when this ordinance would take effect. It's upon adoption unless it's vetoed by the mayor. Okay. All those in favor? That passes. So that means that our businesses can now start doing happy hours. Correct. That's what we got. Mr. Clap on it. Let's go ahead. Okay, that takes you to Roman numeral six for second reading, sponsored by Council Member Brown and Gilliard, Ordinance 2018 -2. 047 an ordinance to amend the city of South Fulton zoning and planning regulations and further lawful purposes. I'll let you in a motion. I'd like to make a motion um, that we accept ordinance 2018-0047. Second. The property will be second in discussion. Yes. I'll see you in the queue. Is it in there? Okay, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Councilwoman, Councilwoman, Council 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 uh, with the Director of Community Development and Regulatory Affairs throughout. Councilman Rao, I'd like to clarify for this one too, for that purpose, I've added a provision, provision at, the, at the bottom that allows me to go okay. back through manually too. Okay, so I'll skip those comments. Um, one, I would like us to replace the maps with maps prepared by our city GIS with the date of today's ordinance because they're not legible. Line uh, 3469 to remove the word incorporated. Amend line 6290 to add poured concrete. Uh, line 26, 
6,268 delete sale closing gate. Line 6323 add LED lights. Line 6329 increase the pole height to 35 feet. Line 6295 sidewalks on both sides of the street. Delete line 6347. Uh, and replace Fulton County Historic Resources Survey with the City of South Fulton throughout. Um, replace district commissioner with city council member throughout. Line one two, well, 12,143 and 12,144 replaced with Wooden County Health Department. And line 12,385, remove reference to South Wood Environmental Justice Working Group. And line six. Oh, I'll speak to it. Uh, line six, three, four, five, in conformance with to replace the values to stay in conformance with the Hood County Night Sky Ordinance values. Uh, most of those changes that I just referenced specifically deal with the overlay district for Sandtown. And, and excuse me, Council Member Rod, how do you plan to submit those list of You're right. I, I, I'm over mountain. Okay. So, but I wanted to read it so the whole public for the transparency of the public. And I'm asking for me as staff, how do you yes. plan to? I can send it to you. I'm right. Okay. And will you, Council? Yes, absolutely. So, Mr. Craig, where are we at on this? So, you have a motion to accept um, the second reading as presented, and I guess that was made by Council Member uh, Gilliard, seconded by Council Member Khalid, and I guess it's up to the motion makers to accept those amendments as presented by Council Member Ralph. Does the maker of the motion accept the amendment? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? That passes. Okay, that takes you to Roman numeral seven. The second reading, sponsored by Council Members Rowell and Gilliard, Ordinance 2018-048, an ordinance adopting City of South Fulton zoning resolution as Appendix C. I'll uh, accept the motion. I'll make a motion to approve the adoption of Appendix C. Property moved and second in discussion. All those <coughs> Ms. Lewis? So, for a point of clarification, we are adopting this resolution, zoning resolution. So, basically, we are adopting what's the kind of policies as it is with the exception of. With the exceptions and the, the recommendations that the Planning Commission gave um, and that we discussed at the last meeting. We have the the first read of this. Okay, so this is the 1955 ordinance that we're accepting. Well, the, you hired a planning consultant to come in and make it South Fulton specific, and since you don't have anything concrete at this point, you really have no other option but to continue to rely on what Fulton County is putting in place. Mr. Mayor, I just, I mean, I, we have no choice because that's what will be lawless, but I just want to just. You know, I just hope we get going on this because we have had moratoriums since I've been elected. We've had moratoriums three times. And this is this is getting ridiculous. But I would ask that you, consistent with what Councilmember Ralph said earlier, that you make the motion to where we insert newer and more clear maps than what's currently available before the county. That we accept subject to updating the maps. We have a motion on the floor, Jack Yes, to approve. All right. And, and, and the city attorney is subject to updating the map. Okay, that's unanimous. Roman numeral eight for second reading. We've removed Council Member Rouse, so this is sole sponsored by Council Member Gilliard. 
ordinance 2018-049 and the ordinance adopting the city of South Fulton subdivision regulations at appendix B. I move to approve the next meeting. Second. All right. Second. If I remove the second discussion, this is uh, the item we're trying to get in the queue. Right. Um, I might not have all of it here, but um, there was some um, revisions made to the um, subdivision turnover ordinance, but I don't see that in this document. Subdivision regulations. It should, it should be in here. And I don't know if I have all the pages. So, do you mean the transfer of development rights? No, 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 no. Before a community uh, is turned over to um, the homeowners association, uh, they, have, they have to go through um, um, a period where they have an inspection by the city and then they do their own inspection and whatever the developer has not done um, before turnover needs to be taken care of. And I made sure that I revised that when my community went through that. And there were some things in it that needed to be corrected. And that was part of the subdivision regulations, but I don't see it in here. Um, let, me do, let me do a search. I can, you give me a second, I can see whether when I did this in, in, in Fulton County, there was a checklist. There was a checklist of things that uh, we were responsible for, the builder responsible for, and the community responsible for. And at the end of that checklist, all three parties had to sign up on it before they could transfer anything to the homeowners association. And I was suggesting we look and we may go back to the park and go back in the and pull that checklist down. Uh, that, that checklist was one thing that uh, needed to be revised because when we got down um, to the end, there was some problems. And, there was some and it's problem. that we, yeah. So, it's so that's the part of what I revised. Okay. So, I mean, it, it, needs, it probably doesn't need to be revised. Right. I'm just saying, but it does exist. Well, can we do this, Council McGillier? Can we adopt as is, then you and I yes. sit down, yes. and then we will do yes. a motion next meeting if necessary to bring back. Um, additional requirements. Yes. Okay, that's, so do I need to make a motion to withdraw my motion? No, so you can uh, amend, um, yeah, approve as is, and then if we need to bring anything back, then I'll sit down with Council and we'll bring those next week. So the motion's on the floor right here. Yeah, yeah, so we have a, So I, I sent you a, uh, a joint transparency bill that I worked on with on a state level with House Representative uh, William Bowley, um, it uh, didn't pass and um, was told by the committee member that I could legislate it on a local level. So I sent that over to you months ago. Um, and should we be incorporating that language? Because that deals with HOA transparency, how often we should get financial. So let's that may require uh, an additional section. So I would just suggest again that we sit down and narrow specifically what you want to be added, and then we can make that adjustment. So I guess I'm going to cut is with what Naima is. I mean, Council, I'm sorry, Councilman McGillyard is what she is represented. Is that due to expect inspection turnover? And what I'm doing is dealing with more of the financial. Correct. So okay. My understanding is that your items are completely different. So we need to stop. Yes, I'm done. Okay, Ms. Robinson. Um, just for clarity, um, if it was passed at the state level, uh, well, that's what I'm trying to get clarity. What I said is that I worked with House Representative William Bowie. It did not pass at the state level. The chair of the committee asked me to legislate it on the local level. He said it was nothing prohibiting me from passing the local level. So I sent the legislation over to our attorney and um, told her I wanted to pass it on a local level. And I have not gotten anything back from her. 
And now we're talking about subdivision turnover. And so I just wanted to, for clarity, make sure that this was something totally different. Is this dealing with subdivision turnover as a, as a relative to inspections, or is it dealing with, or should it all be inclusive of, of inspections and finance? So my tentative answer to you is that it's separate, but it's still going to require me to sit down with Gilliard and see specifically the direction that she's going before I can tell you definitively. Okay. I'm sorry, you still on? Yeah, um, well, thank you. Because one of the things, and, and I do, maybe it's something that got lost, because that's why when I basically said with the subdivision, because I, I don't think all the content, something is missing out of here. Kind of. No, we did say that. Yeah. So, so I, I do support bringing something back, you know, at the December 11th meeting to clarify the intent because there's also reference in that section the director, and it should be the HOA director. I think is the language, but I, I don't want to assume. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Oh, I got it. Yes, I'm, I'm done. Um, the HOA covenant and bylaws determines how they function right. as it relates to everything including finance mm -hmm. so it really isn't about finance it's about development and what the uh, developer takes care of while they are there and in the covenant it will say at a certain percentage of sales you're going to turn the community over to the, over to the HOA and that's where everything breaks down because some developers try to hurry up and get out and leave certain things that, um, that they should have taken care of that they didn't. And the county had, had really the foresight to say, we're going to put something in place to make sure that certain things are taken care of and the burden is not left on the HOA members before the turnover occurs. And so that document was all ways in the, um, the document was, was in the, um, in the regulation, in the subdivision regulation. But it had a date on it where it was difficult for a lot of communities um, that started out like in 2002 and three and four and five and six, they could not, um, um, you know, adhere to it, but we tested it and found out what the kinks were. So my revisions to it were the kinks that we went through. That's all. It's about developer and HOA, and you're going to turn it over, and there's certain things that you need to do. Right. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Mr. 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 go ahead. It's your second time. So the HOA transparency ordinance that I sent over to you, it covers that. It's, it's, it's pretty, it covers that as well. It's so the HOA turnover, <coughs> HOA turnover, um, it also covers the finances. I, I sent that to you months ago. And well, so, you, you did send it. I do have it as a, as a to-do item. The, the purpose for the transition items was to take what Fulton County has in place so that we don't have an interruption in the ordinances that we were relying yeah, on. So we adopt what we should suggest that we adopt now and then come back and amend? Is that what we should well, do? Well, I'm actually going to sit down with Gilliard and get a better idea of what direction she wants to go and then bring that next meeting. And if there's any similarity with what you two are doing, then I will communicate that to you. Okay, so I have to be close All right, I'm going to call for the vote. That passes. That no vote. I think it's yeah. Six one, six one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Second reading. This one is sponsored by Council Member Gilliard and Council Member Rao. Ordinance twenty eighteen zero fifty, an ordinance to establish the environmental regulations and for other lawful purposes. I obtain a motion. I make a motion. That's ordinance twenty eighteen. The proper move to second in discussion. All those in favor? Uh, that passes unanimously. Uh, that's unanimous. Okay. 
Second reading, this item we're adding two sponsors, Council Members Gilliard and Gunn, as requested during the adoption of the agenda. Ordinance to adopt administrative guidelines for tree preservation as Appendix E. And further lawful purposes. Okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the administrative guidelines for tree preservation as Appendix E. Second. Proper move to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes unanimous. That passes. We, I, I just, I just want to check in with our clerk. We did, a, we did approve the ethics ordinance, but we moved, we also moved the DA until after we approved the zoning ordinance. And we have now. Well, the moratorium, and we still have one. Yeah, it's the moratorium, and we okay. still have one zoning item. To vote on okay, so that's the one first statement. Is okay, that correct. You didn't approve that. You just heard it on first reading. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. So do you want to go ahead since we just brought that subject up? The resolution approving the. Um, well, we have one more. Oh. We have plenty of zoning We do we vote on that one? Yes. She just wants to make sure that we did zoning and planning and we did that up here. Remember all the items that council member were already Okay, so you're you're now so do you want to float on the item we just brought up? This is the more door. Okay. So it takes you back to the one resolution that we did have on the zoning moratorium on page two under Roman numeral three as sponsored by council member Gilliard resolution 2018-077 a resolution establishing a moratorium on the acceptance of applications for rezoning and variances and that's within city districts two through six I make a motion to approve the resolution for the moratorium for district. Any discussion? Can you give us, 
Is there, are we going to get a schedule anytime soon on how this is going to work? So you all have received an email requesting meetings. Um, from there, we will be meeting with each of you to discuss the plans and how we're moving forward with the zoning resolution. All right. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Madam Attorney, if you keep it for four months, you can just you can you decide in 30 days that you don't want to go any further. Yeah, yeah that's okay, correct. So you can come back at any time and shorten the duration. You want to come back to me? No, I don't I've got to come down to that point. I've got two points. I have four points, and I've got the rest of the district four points. That's the point I need to come down to. Well, Councilwoman Gill, you're earlier. Yeah, Councilman Gill, earlier you indicated that you plan to move to approve the moratorium with the exception that we remove District 4 from item A on page 530, 530 of the agenda. And item A is the moratorium on petitions for rezoning and variances. Well, I, yes. let, let me clear her up first. So she can accept the four for a month, but she can she can take it off within 30 days. Correct. It's right. December 11th, so she can remove it completely. Now, I got two or three things going on because I left here. But, oh, this is. <coughs> Make sure that I know that I'm, that I'm looking at the right And it's page 530. I'm Okay, I have this. Councilman Brown. 
I bet you were there second? There was. The second and third. The proper move the second. Now we're in discussion. Okay, Master. I'll let it go. No, it's wrong. Um, I think that uh, um, all due respect, you know, we talk about being accountable, and that's across the board. Um, we have not had a financial report in quite some time. And so, uh, you know, as a person who sponsored you know, over the, you know, we need to have that information available. You know, later than our December 11th, um, and I also want to inquire about what is the status of open good, which is okay, well, good. But we definitely want to hear the city manager's report on that. The motion on the floor is to, to table the remaining uh, agenda items to the December 11th meeting. I've been moving second on that. Correct. More discussion. Yes, I concur with. Councilman Morale, uh, we need to allow the city manager to go through his report uh, prior to the December meeting because some of the questions that we have concerning open up is going to be covered in this report. And he has uh, probably some transition items, uh, updates that he needs to provide to us in the city manager report. This is the last item on the agenda. We've been here uh, this long, so I mean, I don't think another five or ten minutes were. Okay, uh, last person, first comments from uh, Mayor Brookfield Baker, and then uh, we'll take the vote. Well, yeah, I was going to ask the city manager to give us his report during this discussion. Okay. Well, we got, we got the, is that the end of the discussion? Yeah. On was, this motion, on your yeah, motion? Yeah. Okay, let's vote. The vote is to end the meeting? Yes. No. That is the vote. Um, no. Table of the remaining agenda. So I, I, I don't have. Listen, I'd like to make a. Uh, I'm on a. We're in a vote now, so we just got to vote. Let's vote. Go ahead. All those in favor? Go ahead. That passed for lack of four votes. That failed for lack of four votes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very simple uh, city manager's report. I think the first thing is is that the council should be excited to know that uh, all of the required transition items, while we have not completed transition officially, all of the completed service delivery areas, all of the required service delivery areas have now been completed. And so all of the departments are now fully engulfed in the city of South Fulton and delivering services actively. And so you should all be very proud and excited about the next steps and the opportunities that you have to further govern your city. So I would congratulate you and thankful for our staff who's here tonight, our citizens who have contributed heavily to all of the decisions that we've made. And while we will celebrate and party when the bowl is on the, the gift, we are extremely excited to have completed the service delivery transition which is complete as of November 19th. Uh, secondly, uh, the open gov uh, request and inquiry that you made, as of today at 2.30 p.m., all of the activities related to open gov have been uploaded and are actually active as of 2.30 p.m. today. And so we will be contacting the council over the balance of the week to get your input on a very public and open release of open government. So that's another exciting transition. And y'all should be clapping. This is hard work now. <laughs> right? this, this has not been easy. So that's a very big deal. And so just some quick transition highlights that I think you guys would be interested in because we've taken some lumps along the way. But our fire, uh, despite some challenges with facilities, our fire department's uh, uh, response times 
has actually remained steady throughout this process and is one of the lowest in the region at about six minutes and 30 seconds. In addition to that, our police, who were much maligned at the beginning of their transition, having less than 90 officers, has increased that by 45% uh year to date uh in addition to that this police department has also seized three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in assets and over 10 vehicles which is very productive and in increasing the, the plight of our city uh, we have also went from less than 1,000 registered businesses with the city to add as of october 31st having 1,749 um, i think that's just a brief highlight of some of the successes related to transition and administering our services. But I am extremely proud that as a young city, we are actively administering services at least at the level of some of our counterparts. So I am excited to give our uh, update today. Uh, I think you will hear from our CFO at the next meeting highlighting that we don't believe we will have to borrow um, in the immediate future, which is also a big beacon as to where our future lies when it comes to fiscal stability. And as you've heard from the city attorney today, we are well on track in making sure that we brought over all of the required ordinances and laws related to transition. So, uh, at some point, I think the mayor is going to sponsor a bottle of champagne for everybody to so celebrate. Uh, not, not, not quite tonight, but we can put it in the refrigerator and, and let it cool off uh, for the next couple of weeks until we tie the boat. So that concludes my report. Thank you so much, man. Uh, stop all that drinking. We need that drink. We not need it. Uh, Ms. Clark, <coughs> would you like to, um, for those uh, council members who still have their computers up, would like to make a motion and vote to adjourn? Oh, wait, oh. we got comments. No. Well, I, the no. city attorney, I'll vote for you. I actually have the city attorney report. I have a comment. Um, I just would, I need a date from the council as far as the revenue enhancement and the Roberts rules. I'd like to bring in um, uh, finance experts to talk about revenue enhancement opportunities as well as bring in someone to cover Robert's rules of order or a refresher. Um, we can either do it here or we can do it in an off-site location, but I just wanted to, if you have dates available, we can do that tonight or I can bring it back up on December 11th. Okay. Wait, are we, wait, I'm sorry. When you say bring it back December 11th, are you saying that's going to be on the work session for December? What does that mean? No, just just ask you for dates again. Actually, I think that's a great idea. Put it on the work session for Perfect. Well, I can do that too. I can put it on the, the work. Well, it's more of, I, I would prefer for you to sit down in a conference type setting with this individual so that it can be like a dialogue, a back and forth. He can show you documentation and paper. So I think it would be more appropriate to to have a sit down, but we can do it in the, in the this format as well. So are we suggesting executive session or? Not executive session, but um, maybe if we can adjust the. You're suggesting adding another meeting to our calendar that is completely separate. Well, no, not a, well, that would probably. That's what you're asking. That would be the best case scenario to just come in for maybe three hours. Um, have an hour dedicated to Robert's rules and then two hours to the revenue enhancement. I suggest we do it. I say I suggest we do it on the work session. Right. That's my suggestion. So you can schedule it during work session too. I'm just saying that it, it, the more appropriate format would be more of a you know, this conference table. Perfect day for the work session. Uh, okay. Well, I'll add it to the December 11th um, work session agenda. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
I'm going to look at Mrs. King's comments and adjourn. Thank you. Second. 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 Uh, in discussion, all those in favor? All those in favor? I'm going to stay in four. Five. Uh, uh, I mean, well, I still want to let you all know that no, no, we will no, have no, a meeting no, no. on Thursday, November 29th at Eden Baptist Church. Okay. I'm going to go to the jacket. All those in favor? I need to make a comment. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. All right, so now I can talk. I do want to let you know that at Enon Baptist Church on Thursday, this coming Thursday, November the 29th at 7 p.m., uh, Mayor Elizabeth Hurst, Carl Hurst, will be there to talk about how we can engage our voters. Um, this was also brought to uh, by Reverend Love, so I do want to make sure that you all are aware, and I will send out some correspondence in regards to this. So that is on Thursday, November the 29th at Enon Baptist Church, 3550 Enon Road. Thank you. Thank you everyone for staying. Yeah. Thank you everyone for staying. Thank you for Fulton County for letting us stay. God bless you forever. Sorry, it took so long.